check the stream, but we all never sit the bitch. Rising stars of the radio that watches we ascend. Second stream telling the truth, there's no need to take offense. Ben J. Logan in the booth, so you better pay attention. Been balling for a long time, I'm feeling like a maid rock. Balling every night and pay for chasing is my day job. I can't wait to the base, bro. Can't wait till I take off. I don't know how to get stopped. I'm Barry Sanders with the rock. You hope you get into the game. I put a 30 every day. It's straight cash. Show me Randy Moss with the pay. I've been balling like I'm Damon, spitting like I'm Jay. And in case you ain't know the name, I'm Strawberry Jams. I'm with your chick, going ahead with the click, with the fans. Sticking to the game plan, coach that get the bands. All my dogs up in here, but we don't like the Huskies. All Jams got a show guarantee, that's a musty. Front row, see me ballin', get you courtside seatin' in the game, know a thing, of course I'm meetin', and we do it every day, we do it every weekend, never had an off day or an off season. Good afternoon, Corvallis. You're listening to Second String Sports on 88.7 FM. Corvallis back with another episode. Second week, second show. Second term. Let's second do term. It. 2016. We have some special guests in the booth before we start. We're going to let them uh, give a little shout out before uh, we get started here. Yeah, so let's, uh, guys, let's introduce you guys to self here. Uh, well, what's up? My name is Jeff Lowe. Back again. Uh, this good is to be thir- back. Is this like a third or maybe a third or fourth uh, time here, Jeff? I think it's third. Third. It's cre- think, creeping yeah, up yeah. on a featured guest uh, <laughs> yeah. on yeah. that list. There. He's, yeah. a, he's our he's our LA insider. As uh, you can tell if you're watching, I got yeah. my uh, <laughs> got my Dodger hat and my Kings jersey on today. Yeah. So if you got any LA questions, you can tweet in the Jeff. You know, there's Kobe 81 day. We'll probably talk about oh, that. Oh, you know, we're already talking Kobe, about Kobe it. insider. Tweet about I've that. Been, I've been watching Sports Center all morning, getting hyped up. For this 81 point game yeah. that we're, we're going to talk about. <laughs> All right, uh, Brian, let's introduce yourself here. What's up? I'm Brian Reese. I'm a senior here at Oregon State. Um, friends with Jake, friends with Jeff. Uh, again, get into the radio business, hoping to. Yeah, there uh, we go. Looking forward to working with you guys. Oh, yeah. Sweet, exactly. So uh, before we get started here, just a quick rundown. You can follow us at Second String KBVR on Twitter or hashtag Second String Sports to tweet in any questions or disagreements. Wow, anything. we are starting to show literally anything. You if you want to, uh, if you want to start with a uh, little beef action, if you want beef with us, tweet at us. Yeah, fun fact, uh, if you we also want to see what we look like, if you heard the voices of uh, Jeff and Brian and you like just sort of yeah. wondering what they look like. Yeah. Like, you can hit, <laughs> I hit just up on curiosity, uh, really. KBVR.com. You can uh, watch us yeah. on camera. Yeah, you know? go to the FM page. Boom. You're there. All right. So we're going to kick it off here. OSU basketball. Yeah, let's just jump right into it. The most relevant topic. Yeah. And I think we should probably should just talk uh, or start talking yeah, about that's inevitable. What, literally what almost the whole country oh, has kind of seen. Break the um, internet. How you break the internet? Yeah, and not in a good way. Uh, <laughs> and Jarmal Reed. It's, you know, let's kind of talk about that. Probably heard the name quite a bit over yeah, the past and, week. Yeah, and if anybody hasn't seen it, Jarmal Reed against the Utah game. Late in the game, uh, really close. And Jarmal... It, granted, uh, there may be, in my opinion, there wasn't a few calls here and there, yeah. but Jamal uh, tripped uh, Pac-12 ref Tommy Nunez. Uh, <laughs> kind of. If you if you don't if you haven't seen it, just maybe Google it. You'll probably find see, it. You'll probably Google see his vines. name and you'll find it. Yeah. Uh, and so he just kinda, he, he tripped him, fell. Tommy Nunez looked gets unintentional up. at first. Looked unintentional at first, but then you see the replay. Uh, saw the, saw yeah. Jarmol's eyes just lurking. Uh, yeah. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just had to click that. I'm, my finger was hovering on that. Yeah. So it, it it's an unfortunate situation, really. Uh, and so, you know, some of us in here we know Jarmol. Uh, and Jamal's a good guy. He's hilarious. Yeah, he's he's saying, funny. Yeah. He, and uh, and it's just it's just unfortunate that some of the public here has to, uh, if they don't know Jamal and they don't uh, even know about the Oregon State basketball. Think of program. him and think of the program from that one isolated. And they, and they just incident. know him and the basketball team from that incident, which is unfortunate. Yeah, uh, it was clearly a mistake. But yeah. he he is a good guy. Mm-hmm. So I, I I don't know. I mean. I don't think you can make a judgment off off one you yeah. know, error that he made. Clearly, it was big, and uh, 
think it was kind of a slow uh, national news day. So of course it made yeah made, made every news, literally but, made everything. Yeah, and it was, it, I don't know it. I think you know he granted you know he's a student athlete. He's young, and you know players you know players and you know people they're going to learn from their mistakes just like that. And um, I think the four game suspension for that I think uh, was granted. Probably it was probably right for it. So do you see that Tinkle so wanted too. six, but the Pac-12 made him do four. Yeah. So, but I, depending on what Jarmal's in quotes uh, emotions and actions are here in the next hey, coming yeah. week or so, he's still able to practice. So he just yeah, can't. he's able to practice the team, but not he's not able to sit on the bench during games. Uh, Jeff, Brian, what's your guys' opinion on this? I mean, it's obviously really bad. Like, you go back and watch it, and his eyes lock right. He yeah. finds where that ref is, and it's so intentional. And it could not have come at a worse possible yep. time in the game. Tied two minutes. Tied two minutes to go. You Momentum Utah, shifted. And, and, well, two free throws. And he had just made back. a great play, yeah. too, which is you like, know? why would you choose to do it in that? And it's it's just, it's such a selfish play. I mean, I know, I mean, I don't know Jarmal like you guys do, but everything I've heard he sounds like a nice guy but that's just a selfish play in that situation a game yeah. that the Beavers need to win yeah I, I mean yeah. we've now gone on a three-game skid yeah, we're, here we're, in the Pac-12 yeah and we needed that win a win on the road at Utah is yeah, huge. so yeah that's also let's talk about it because before the game against Utah we played Colorado and uh the Colorado game that was uh well it was just a tough game Josh Scott uh, oh man he tore us apart the, the college basketball version of Tim Duncan yeah uh, Not overly athletic, no, but just but, seemed to make every move. That I he, know it was, it, just, it was rough, and you know he they they that's what uh, that kind of started our rebounding woes. Actually, the rebounding woes probably started against Stanford. We did good against yeah. Cal. We talked about that last or the best last week as well. But uh, that game against Colorado, we couldn't rebound the ball. It continued. I mean, and, that's why we lost the Stanford game. I mean, they had what? I don't even know how many more, but I remember looking up. They had. Mm. Significant amount more shots than we yeah, did. Yeah, and we'll talk about it in a couple games there. And the Utah game, you know, we had a lead uh, for like practically the whole game. Yeah, we, mm-hmm. I mean, we, we were up 10 in, in the second half. Yeah, and I think at one point it was like 30 something to 16. Yeah, I think 32 no, to 16. Beavs were looking good. We and were then looking great. I was, so I was in Seattle, I was visiting my sister at the mm-hmm. UW, and I'm like sneaking peeks watching the game on my phone. And I check the score. Like I'm watching it. We're up 10. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll put it away. Like, I don't have to watch. Yeah. I check back again, and it's right as Jarmal Reed trips trips the oh, ref. God. Yeah. I turn it on. I'm like, are you kidding it's me? It's your fault, Jeff. I yeah. know. It's just I kept, it's I just fault. Walk, I should have kept glow. watching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Classic. Uh, yeah. I, we just, we lost some energy, and we just couldn't score. We went really cold there the last, like, seven, eight minutes, and it was just tough for us to buy a bucket. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, I don't know. Let's uh, we can read the statement of the uh, Jarmal and Tinkle for both times. Uh, the Jarmal read statement states: First and foremost, I would like to apologize to Oregon State University, Beaver Nation, the Pac-12 Conference, my family, my coaching staff, and my teammates, uh, and the game officials. Reed said, "I'm all I'm aware of my actions, not embarrassed for my or embarrassed for my family, but also the university and the Oregon State basketball program. I was not raised to act in that manner uh, that was displayed on that play. I'm well aware that I made a mistake that has damaged my image. My actions are inexcusable, and I am willing to accept any consequences that to follow. So, I." Uh, yeah, he made because that was a lot of people were saying after the game. He's like, "Oh, you got a man up to," and it was everybody was like, "Hey, just kind of hold off." And that kind of came there in the Saturday afternoon game, yeah, the Saturday afternoon, it, I think. Yeah, and you, you know that's like pretty much all you can say. The unfortunate yeah. part for Jarmal is he's a senior and he doesn't have you know the same sort of time that you would have to kind of just rehabilitate your image as you would. Yeah, a freshman or sophomore. I mean, that was kind of the sad part is that. You know, he is 22, but he has been in the program for four years. So, yeah. you know. And uh, as a team standpoint, I, I when it first happened, I real, I kind of thought like, well, Jarmal was out for most of the year with the stress fracture in his foot. So I was, mm-hmm. I was thinking, I was like, yeah, it, even this happened, Jarmal was playing well, uh, even with pa- like dishing some passes off uh, and even scoring as well. And But now, after this game the other day, I was, I kind of, Thinking that we almost need Jarmal. It's almost a uh, we do. He adds a lot of depth. Yeah, so. energy. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jar- Jarmol brings toughness too. Yeah. Yep. I-, I mean, kind of an undersized four. He's he's not afraid to go up against a lot of the bigger guys and yeah. rebound. I would say right now he's almost our most aggre- He's the most aggressive forward. Uh, that's yeah. not. But I I wouldn't say if you want to uh, put t- uh, Trace in there. Uh, but I would almost put him at like a small. I put it, I'm saying like power forward, like center. He's yeah, the most kinda, aggressive scoring. He uh, kind of plays like Draymond Green. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, he's obviously not as talented as Draymond, but yeah. you know that kind of undersized. Draymond just getting triple doubles left and right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think we'll be seeing that anytime soon. But yeah. I mean, you know, Jarmal can rebound and he 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 gets mm-hmm. those dirty points, you know, and plays tough. Got yeah. A good touch around the basket as well. Like that's one thing I've noticed in that UCLA. That's one thing I noticed in that UCLA game was that. They missed a lot of close shots, but he's got that touch inside that. A lot of those where they bounce around the rim, they go in. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they were missing those against UCLA. And that's what makes me nervous about going forward is that they're already struggling and they need to get that momentum back. But this doesn't help putting a, you know X on their back because even though refs aren't supposed to be personally biased towards teams, you can almost see it in a way. I mean, they opened the game against UCLA with three fouls right off the bat within the yeah. first 20 seconds. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't know. Hopefully they can get that momentum going. That will help out. But yeah, he's a he's a huge hit to their team right now. Yeah. And speaking uh, of the losses, we we can get into that now. Yeah. Oof. And yeah, it's just been a kind. Of, it's like, been a rough patch. It's been a rough patch, and it's you can't really. It, it's hard to explain the skid and what's really wrong. I don't even think Tinkle Tinkle can't even put a word on it. It's it's, it's really tough, but I think it's ultimately what I think it, it is. Happens. It's just it's uh. The ch- it's kind of just the change of roles from last year to this year. I think Malcolm's lost. I think Malcolm's a little bit lost in the offense right now. Uh, seeing that last year, he you know he just knew exactly what his role was. He was going to be the starting point guard and just playing the whole entire game practically. And we we've seen some lineup shakeups too. Langston's now uh, in this previous game here against UCLA Langston went to the bench and Trace came in and I think some of this lineup shake I ultimately I think it might help out going forward but right now I think it's just kind of in a transition period where some players are just kind of lost and also the youth uh, I think maybe might be taking a little bit of a toll and I think I kind of see that in Drew as well but you know uh I think going forward, I, I think it's. I think it's this little rough patch might be good for us, but we definitely need to kind of get off this uh, little rough patch we're on. I, th- I think it, it'll be good going forward because you got you got the four freshmen who are playing meaningful minutes right now. Yep, and they're gonna kind of get the groove of playing in Pac-12 basketball, playing on the road. You know, I, I don't know. I. I we're probably not going to make the tournament this year. I know there was a lot of hopes. There was there was a lot of there was a lot of hype. A lot of hype that okay, this is the year the Beavers finally do it. I don't think I don't think they're going to do it, especially now at the Pac-12. It's yeah. looking like they're going to have seven to eight teams in there. Yeah. Uh, but going forward, you got four freshmen who play meaningful minutes, and you know Trace yeah. and Eubanks are the two who yeah. really stand out. And man, they're good. Yeah. Uh, and as you said, because the Pac-12 this year, it is, it is tough, and it's really flipped. And I'm, I'm actually, yeah, I'm see. really surprised. It, it's, it's, it's honestly, it's just like Pac-12 football this year. Like, yeah. there's no like one team that stands out that you go, okay, like we got our Alabama, we got our, yeah. you know, yeah. Kentucky or our Duke or whatever, who's gonna stand out and like that's your best team. But we have eight to ten teams that are really yeah. solid. And that's, there. and it, I think it was, I don't know if it was RPI, uh, but I. Th- or just tough, uh, but I think it was us, Pac-12, and uh, the Big 12, yeah. I think, is like the two toughest conference in like RPI or something like that right now. The Big 12 is pretty pretty gnarly to go through, yeah, I Yeah, say. you got Oklahoma, Kansas. Uh, Oklahoma State beat Kansas this week. Iowa yeah. State, uh, Baylor's in, in the top 15. So they're almost kind of like us right now. West they're, Virginia, they're beating too. Up on each, yeah. Everyone's just beating up on everyone each other. Everyone in the Big 12 just beating up on everyone. Yeah, so it's kind of like what we have here in the Pac-12. Uh but this, we'll talk about some, you know, USC is a hot team right now. Washington's hot. hot. Andrew Andrews. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that later as well. But back 12 right now. It's crazy. Smoking. Smoking. Yeah. Yeah. Impossible to predict. Yeah. So, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough for us. Like, as Jeff said, it's going to be tough for us to get into the tournament this year automatically with some of these losses that we've had. But uh, I think, you know, Looking forward to the next couple of years is that's going to be the the big transition because that's when Tinkle's even going to have more of his players. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So that's gonna be that's gonna be key a key to success. And and going back to they the, don't want us to succeed. They don't. <laughs> we need those sound bites ASAP. Yeah, we do. We need some DJ Khaled sound bites. <laughs> but going back to the freshmen real quick, I've been pretty impressed with how they've you know come out um, like pretty fearless on the road. Yeah. I mean Kansas, you remember that yeah, Kansas, Trace, Trace five for five. Yeah, yeah. You know Utah, they opened up well. What they got to learn is to finish games, and that comes with experience. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, but it was kind of the same thing last year too. Mm-hmm. Where Oregon State, where we'd get off to kind of we'd have this good we'd have this good first half. We'd be with a team that like you know we're not really supposed to be there with, and then right around the ten minute mark in the second half, like yeah. the uh, superior uh, talent uh, kind of takes yeah. over. Switches flip. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of which is weird, and you know, in the beginning of the year, you kind of saw that where yeah. they, it seemed like they were starting to learn how to close games a little better, and now they've kind of gone back to not not really being able to close those games out. Mm-hmm. And I think we can this year too. It's just I think last year a lot of it was a lack of depth. Definitely. I mean, they just got tired by the end, especially yeah. running running around the zone. And yeah, I, well, I mean, it was seven players last year. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, I think we have the talent. Two finished games, but it it comes with experience, and it's, we, they just don't have it right now. Yeah, yeah, like what you were saying, Logan. Some of the guys just seem lost too at times, like in their roles, which makes things. I don't know. They just are. It comes to where coming to finish games. I don't know where like some players are trying to like. You know, a lot of times it's Gary that you see trying to finish the game himself because no one else is stepping up. Yeah, and I don't know. You just don't see the guys really stepping up into their role making big impact plays like you hope they would. Yeah, that was kind of the start of the year too. I can't remember which game exactly it was. It was one of the, it was one of the earlier games non conference. Uh that Gary took like twenty some yeah. shots and it well we I think we won yeah, that game as well. Kobe in that game. Or no hey, no it was hey, the game hey, we, no, hey, I think hey. it was the game we lost. <laughs> and it was Valpo. It was Valpo. It was oh. a Valpo game. Yep, that's what it was. That's, yep, that's what it was. Um and then because it, it, that's what happens though. Sometimes when we, when we just feel lost and we just and Gary just takes kind of you know twenty plus shots and that's what we, that's we can't have that. We need we definitely need the the balance of what you know Trey scoring fifteen, uh, Tinkle scoring you know twelve and Drew getting eight and Langston getting seven and you know just mm-hmm. a good balance. And that's I mean, you know but that's. It's it just sometimes there it's not happening, so it's it's tough. Well, that's just not also Gary's game. Gary's not yeah. a prolific scorer. He's an all around really yeah. good player. Yeah, uh, he doesn't just specialize in scoring. He's an all around game game player. But when you have him taking twenty plus shots a game, that's kind of putting the offense out of rhythm. Yeah. What else we got for? Uh, we can talk about the more about the game here coming last up this night. weekend. Yeah. Or, or this last game, yeah, this game last night. True, true. Uh, we also later here have a soundbite from Tinkle and Trace. Uh, but let's talk about the game last night against UCLA. What you guys see from that? Uh, that was two nights ago, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was yeah, like, was two yeah, two nights. Yeah, ago. yeah. It's um, been a blur this week. Yesterday was a blur. It's a big yeah. blur. Same thing. Um, that was that was pretty rough from the very start. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I, it, it was hard to watch. There was no control the entire match. Yeah. On the beef side, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It wasn't like a Utah situation where we came out with energy. It just kind of felt like Fatigued the whole game. Almost. Yeah. I don't know. As the game was going through, I mean, we were talking about this before. Jeff was saying, you know, even when we got within three, uh, it just didn't feel like we were ever going to win it. Yeah. I, I, I just had no confidence, uh, you know, halfway through, and usually I, mean, I do. It's, it's never a good sign when you start the game off, and within, you know, a minute and a half, you got three fouls. <laughs> yeah. You know? And it, it just... I mean, I don't know. It was weird just watching that game. I never really thought Oregon State was going to make a run and take a lead and really take over that game. I don't know what it was, but I, I think like I mean, especially towards the end of the game, the ball just kind of they on, on offense it stopped moving. They they kind of started forcing threes and taking really mm-hmm. bad shots, and that's kind of something that's something you've been seeing at least later in games sometimes where they just they don't really run an offensive set. They kind of go, all right, yeah. Gary Langston, you know, Malcolm, get to the lane, try and like kick out for a three, and it doesn't always work. Yeah, yeah. Like you were saying too, the early fouls GP two picked up too quick. Yeah. One of them yeah, was dumb, was... just slapping down on the ball that yeah, he should have just left alone. I... And Gary, yeah, he was out. For, he, I, mean, I think maybe he sat for a long out for time. Most yeah. of the first half, maybe yeah, like this fifth five minutes ago. Uh, yeah, I want to say like probably six minutes, maybe like five six minutes left in the first half. He came back in. Yeah, so he was yeah, out yeah. for a while, I, yeah. and he needed to and too. I, I mean, our offense looked horrible. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had seven points with like with eleven minutes to go in the first yeah. half. Yeah, and Gomes got in foul trouble too pretty yeah, early Gomes in his first start of the year, and he's trying to you know get back. That was his second start. Second start of the year. Sorry about that. 
and he's trying to get it back into rhythm, you know. It's been trying to get back in that starting role. I'm not yeah. sure he'll keep it, but, you know, bring that senior, like, seniority into the game, experience, and he wasn't even able to get into a role because – they, he got in foul trouble real early as well. Yeah, and uh, that that was tough because then and, you know, then Drew came in and then uh, and then after that uh, NJ and but NJ has been putting in some good minutes as well. And I, yeah, I, credit I've been, to NJ. He's been yeah working his they, butt a couple, off, especially yeah. from freshman year. Yeah, and there, there's been a couple times where, but overall though, from NJ, I've been I've been impressed this year from whenever Drew's in foul trouble or now that Gomez is back and now without Jamal. But I I think NJ has been playing really well, so I gotta give credit there to NJ. But uh, Jake, uh, we ready to queue up this tinkle soundbite? Yeah, got we got actually we got here. we got a double tinkle soundbite. We got son and father. Yeah, two time tinkle soundbite. Nice. I am your father. <laughs> wow, that was disgusting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, cue this up. Boom. Uh, tough game. Credit UCLA, boy, they hit a lot of shots and uh, made some big baskets. We're really uh, the aggressor tonight. Um, proud, proud of some fight that we showed, you know. But um, gosh, we just every time we made a little run, we shot ourselves in the foot or, or gave up a little bit of a run. Um, you know, I thought maybe we had some some guys that maybe waited a little bit too late to get going and. And, uh, you know, somehow I, I obviously didn't do a terrific job of getting our guys uh, prepared mentally uh, for tonight. So um, I thought we had a good practice yesterday, thought we had good preparation, but uh, we, weren't, we weren't ready to come out of the gate tonight, and so that, that falls on me. And so we'll, uh, we'll have to correct that moving forward. Um, I felt the same, really, you know. Uh, all I really want to do is win, so I don't really, you know, whatever my role is. But... Being out there, um, kind of got the nerves out early and things like that, but you know, I wasn't too you know, nervous going into it. And we're back. That was a little uh, father son, as Logan said. Yeah. Tinkly tinkle. Yeah. Uh, what? I don't know. It sounds <laughs> like mono y mono, no, but I, it's I, a, I know I got it, uh, but yeah, it just yeah, came yeah, off yeah, really yeah, hard. Shut up, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. For, for anyone noticing on camera, Jeff just took off the LA Kings. Jersey Only to, to, go to, to a exp- Dodger shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Represent Yasiel Puig. Classic <laughs> LA Jeff. That's right. <laughs> Yasiel's probably going to, you know. He'll probably be gone soon. He'll probably be gone pretty soon you know, the Dodgers. You'll, but you'll, I, I got to remember the memories while I can. <laughs> I wouldn't say they're great memories. His uh-huh. first season is well, pretty I mean, His first know. season was pretty cool, and then his second season was cool, and then this year he just kind of got hurt and <laughs> did a bunch of stupid stuff. Um, all right, so yeah, we'll just we'll just recap. Tinkle just kind of talked about there the the hard effort that the team played, and uh, Trace talking about his first start. And uh, going forward uh, here against the game of against USC this weekend, this weekend Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Noon. And if you remember last year, also game against USC was also in the afternoon, and that was also a, almost a sellout crowd. Yeah. Uh, Here's the issue with this one: NFL playoffs. Sunday. Yep. <laughs> Championship yep. Sunday. Yep. Sorry yeah. to the Beavs, but I'm not going to be there. Because uh, Patriots-Broncos kicks off at 12. Uh, and I think this tips off at noon also. This tips yeah. off at noon. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Sorry, but football is more entertaining. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be at the Beavs. Uh, Look at you but, being dedicated. You know, if, I'll if, be at the Beavs, too. I'll be at the if, Beavs, it, if, it the, if it was the Chiefs <laughs> in that situation... Uh, I probably would. I would probably be watching the Chiefs. Yeah, so. you, you, you could you could watch the Chiefs. You know, screw up time management and watch yep. Andy Reid. Just classic Andy <laughs> Reid. <Dang. Alex> <laughs> That's why we let Peterson go to the Eagles. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Send, send them back. Yeah, yeah, the Eagles, like, Eagles basically hire Andy Reid 2.0. Which is just so, they literally which did. Is so bizarre. I mean, it, That's it is, such a it, Philadelphia it, thing yeah, to right? do. Though. You know, you, you hire you hire Chip, and then go. Oh, okay. Well, we'll go back to Andy Reid. <laughs> uh, hey, whatever. We'll, we'll dive whatever into yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get into that when we're talking about football. But USC game. Uh, McLaughlin for USC. Uh, Probably he's up there with one of maybe Pac-12 Player of the Year's up there. With, you know, Gary and Andrew mm, Andrews. Yeah. And, um, but USC, they they did lose to Oregon last night, uh, which yep. is it's just another example of teams beating up on each other on the Pac-12. What do you guys got a prediction for the game against USC? I think we'll be ready. Uh, I think Tinkle probably went in after the UCLA game and probably mm. ripped them. 
A new one. Hard. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I mean, I don't know. wasn't it Wasn't there? But it's safe to Tinkle, say yes. He did. After the whole Jarmal thing, and then that the way they played and responded it's to that. It's safe to say he's not putting up with anything anymore. Yeah. Anything. Um. Obviously, going to be a tough game. They're playing well. They're obviously really confident. Um. Mm-hmm. I think I think Beavs went in a close one. Uh. Hopefully, we get a good crowd. I, I think, think the crowd will still be, be a good crowd. So. I think mm-hmm. that's going to be USC. a huge USC major always key. draws. True. I think that's going to be a major key. Uh, major key. You know, just totally need a soundbite for that. <laughs> just feed off the crowd energy. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they went, a, went in a close one. I think they bounced back. I, it's kind of weird because they, they seem to be kind of just going back and forth between, you know, offense is free-flowing and looking like one of Pac-12's best and yeah. then just completely going stagnant. Uh I don't know. I think this is one of the one of the good the good times. I think they went in a close one. Yeah, I think I I got the bees in this one too. Uh, but I think it's gonna be a close game as well. But I, I got the bees. I, I agree. I'm with you guys. I think the Beavers beat SC. I mean, my dad went to SC, so I want the Beavers to win. We've kind of been talking a little junk back and forth, but yeah. I do think the Beavers win this. It's a close one. Beavers at home. I don't think they play as bad as they did against UCLA. I think they come out come out fired up. Not gonna say a double digit win, but it'll be it'll be close. It'll be a win. It'll be a win, definitely. Yeah, it should be. When Cal made a trip up here earlier this year, they lost to Oregon a couple of nights before playing Oregon State, and then they came to Oregon State, lost that. And game. look how we yeah, really hope look how we performed that in that situation, game. Yeah. which I think it could be after that UCLA performance. They, so I yeah. think they'll have fire Jake? lit up underneath them. I'm going Beavs too. There I agree. It is. Straight beeves across the table. Unanimous Sweet. go beeves. High rolling beeves. Go yeah. beeves. It's that go beeves lifestyle. It is. I mean, yeah. You can't root against them. Lifestyle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, Sorry. Young Sorry. Can you finish it? <laughs> young Jake, can you rap sire for us? Rap sire? No. Not. Come on, rap sire. Rap sire. Friday, Jake. Come on. I don't on. think we have the rap sire. Come anymore. on, Jake. Four bar Friday. Yeah. Damien would do it. <laughs> Come on, Money Stacks. Once we talk NBA, maybe. Get something queued up. Oh, yeah. All right. Get some instrumentals in here. Let's do it, Jake. I mean, we could do a whole second string cipher. <laughs> NBA all, nothing but raps <laughs> alright so before we do move on from basketball just quick shout out to women's basketball though beating Stanford for anyone who's out there at that game mm-hmm. first time that they've beaten Stanford since 2001 so. 2001 and it's quite a while and for women's basketball <laughs> just a bit and for women's basketball Stanford is a powerhouse they're like the U, like they're the UConn. They are of the, West Coast. the Alabama of. They're the Alabama of football of the con. Yeah. Well, no, UConn would really be that. UConn would be the Alabama of women's basketball. I wouldn't really. They're be. like the LSU. No, they're not no, LSU. They're like, well, because U- UConn, yeah, UConn's the Alabama. Yeah, they UConn's are. the Alabama. Like, Stanford's like, I don't know. LSU's like a solid comparison, but LSU's only won one national title, so. I I don't know. I mean, it's kind of hard, kind of hard to pick a college college yeah. basketball team, I, a college football team. Ohio State. Yeah, Ohio, Ohio there you State. Go. Ohio State. Hey, hey, shout, out, shout, out, shout, out shout out to Mike. Michael Pallison here in the corner. Yeah. He, he gave us a little OSU compa- or Ohio State comparison there. He's our cameraman. He's our intern. <laughs> shout out to Mike. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's a good comparison. Thanks, Mike. That was really that was really key. That's a big key there. Major key. Major Mike. key. For Mike, Mike. Major key. Mike. Mike as a whole key. is just a major key. Yeah. <laughs> as a person. Uh, thanks for the comparison. But yeah, Stanford. Uh, it was a good game for the Be- Lady Beeves. And uh, if you guys missed it last night, Jake and I had the Beaver Sports Show. We had a little sit down with uh, a little women's basketball insider. So you guys can, if you mm-hmm. want to tune in that, look at KBVR 26 YouTube page. That should be on here pretty soon. So. Exactly. All right. That's enough of basketball. So make sure to get out to USC on Sunday noon. Right? Noon. Noon, yep. noon in noon. Gill Coliseum. We're going to take a quick PSA break. But when we come back, stay tuned. We're going to get into this NFL season. Championship games coming up. Second string sports. Stay tuned. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. And in gym, I learned that I'm pathetic and a joke. In history, I learned that I'm trash. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn... Is why no one ever helps. 
Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. This is Usher. I've spent years mentoring youth and have seen how volunteering and service teaches young people the skills they need to become leaders and sets them on the path for success. This is about you. It's about your power. It's about creating change on your terms by volunteering. The truth is, you can do anything. Join me in answering the president's call to service. Go to serve.gov today. This message is brought to you by United We Serve and the Corporation for National and Community Service. The Benton Soil and Water... Are your kids on the computer all day? Pulling the power cord can get them onto the playground. Creative moms can keep kids active and healthy. Get ideas at letsmove.gov. Brought to you by the USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. Make good nutrition and physical activity part of your family's daily lifestyle. Be our guest to healthy living and visit letsmove.gov to learn more. Brought to you by Let's Move, the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ad Council. It's second stream, but we all never sit the bitch. Rising stars of the radio that watches we ascend. Second ring telling the truth, there's no need to take offense. Red Jake Logan in the booth, so you better pay attention. And we're back, Second String Sports. Before we get into it, we just want to remind you, if you're watching on the live stream or listening live on 88.7 FM, you can hashtag Second String Sports, post on our Facebook page, or tweet us. Let's, uh, we could do a quick little round of Twitter handles if they don't know because of the guests. At McGrady 7 Slide into my DMs, at <laughs> LT McGinnis. And at Gran Ocampo. Uh, hey, let's give some shout-outs over at, here. At GLO Show 6 I know Brian's hey. going. Brian, Brian, you on Twitter? <laughs> At B Reese. Hey, there <laughs> <is>. <laughs> I got one. I'm very rarely on it, though. <laughs> that was such a casual. Yeah. <laughs> At B Reese. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you do uh, have any disagreements or agreements with what we've talked about so far, uh, well, that was a weird far. Mm. Jarmal incident, OSU basketball, you can hashtag second string sports and tweet at us. Moving on, though, we're going to get into a little professional sports NFL playoffs, recap what happened last weekend, and then let's get into the championship games this weekend. What do you guys think? Uh, last weekend, I cried uh, the whole weekend. and Yeah, you were, uh, for those who didn't know, Logan was a little silent ball of... Uh, yeah, just it was, sadness and despair. Uh, well, ultimately, thought I'd have to call a hotline or something. It, it was, it was in my lifetime that I can remember. I've never seen a Kansas City Chiefs playoff victory. You got that the week before. I got that so week you're, before. You're happy. You're built up. Texas. Wait, hold up. Didn't didn't the Chiefs beat Peyton Manning in 2003? Because I remember watching that. And not in the playoffs. No, that wasn't the playoffs. I thought. No. Nope. Or was that to get into the playoffs? Mm, no, we we got into the playoffs, but uh, lost. That's what it was. Yeah, we lost. The, yeah, we lost. Well, to them. Sorry for rubbing that in. And then we also played the Colts. The Jeff knew. He just years. wanted to get no. that in. <laughs> Jeff totally knew. Yeah, Rubbed and in. we yeah I remember we sneak we snuck in that year too. Then there was the Andrew Luck year where he. Ooh, oh you know, man, remember I, that game? I remember watching uh, that on a plane. So that, I I remember that <laughs> what was the heck. Even, I, yeah. <laughs> and then Uncle Tom comes in and just <laughs> last week. Man, it was tough, but there was a lot. There was a lot of there was a lot of miscues in the Chiefs part. Uh, there was a Nile Davis fumble. Yeah. Uh, that was Andy Reid's headphones allegedly. Uh, Andy Reid's clock just not working. Yeah, the clock the clock management. That was terrible. It was it was pretty was bad. Terrible. But really, it it wasn't te- like, overall in a sense it wasn't that bad. They still like when they got the ball when they got the touchdown, but them yeah. huddling up when there was like a minute fifteen, I was like, "Come on, just go!" And yeah. Well, I I can absolutely I can defend Andy Reid a little bit here with yeah. his whole strategy of kind of taking a little more, you know, taking time. For one, he runs the West Coast offense that's not really designed to go fast. They just don't like doing that. Yeah. And there and secondly, he does. I I don't blame him for not wanting to give the ball back to Brady. And I mean, basically, his whole thinking is: I got all three timeouts. I score. I force them to run the clock out. You know, burn my three timeouts. They haven't run on me all day. I at least get another shot. Yeah, get the ball with a minute or something. He just got unlucky with the Rob Gronkowski tip pass yeah. to Edelman, which yeah. is not Andy Reid's fault. Yeah, there, there. But overall, it was it was still it was an entertaining game to watch. But even more entertaining. All right, we'll move on because I don't. I'm kind of done with it. I'm already, I'm already <laughs> done with it. Uh, but no, Patriots move on. Boom, it's over. 
I shed a tear one more time. Uh, next game was probably one of the best football games. Green Bay. That's not a, a you know maybe like a Super Bowl Tyree you know catch. That there. was crazy. Yeah, that game was, that was awesome. Pack, that was great. Packers versus Cardinals. We talked about this on air last week with Jordan Villeman, and we were like, man, you cannot pick against Aaron Rodgers. It's tough. But then mm-hmm. we some of us went like it was like half split with uh, in the booth here. And it was tough for, for all of us to pick. And when, if everybody missed it, if you didn't miss it, sucks to be you. But that Aaron Rodgers, Hail Mary. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was insane. Wow. Jeff, Jeff Janis. Yeah. What and, up, uh, right? Jeff Janis with two catches <laughs> this two, whole season. Yeah. And yeah. just goes off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's, it's like, Janice time, but <laughs> Rogers like he just he just went side like it was total sidearm just like flicked, boom. I think the the more impressive though throw by Rogers is that fourth and twenty in his own end zone, yeah. And he gets somehow like avoids the rush in his own end zone. That was like just a fadeaway like, drop back. Just yeah, kind of yeah. flicks his wrist and hits. I think it was, that Ab- was I think it was Abradaris, yeah. the other the other stereotypical white, that, white receiver. Yeah, the, that's a second hail mary this a Rogers year. thing. Yeah, second hail mary this year for Rogers. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh but I, after that, I instantly thought of our interview with Jordan and yeah. Austin. I was like, "Man, you know," because I think I think Jordan I think Jordan picked the the Packers and that too. And I was like, "Wow, I, I think yeah. he's right. You just can't pick against Aaron Rodgers. He's, he's a god. That's it." Ex- yeah. well, I but, mean, except for the fact that he's lost in overtime the last two yeah. seasons and hasn't even gotten a chance to touch the ball. Right. But. Yeah. But yeah, and then we'll move on to that. We got uh, Flipgate. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's actually not a coin flip; it's a coin toss. So, <laughs> yeah, coin right. fall. Yeah, that was so funny. That's pretty funny. And oh yeah, there, was it Jake? Yeah, it was Jeff. Uh, and it was it was pretty funny when they had the camera just on the coin. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know who like who like the director of NBC is that and money. why he's got. I mean, that, that's a great shot for him to get, you know, right on the coin. Yeah. This camera but coin it, guy, yeah, he's, yeah. he's got his job. <laughs> the the job. coin did not rotate at all. Uh, no, that's an easy fix. We can fix that. Uh, if anybody just saw it on there. We'll, we'll fix it. <laughs> Jake, uh, Jake, I did that last year. You're all right. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Jay, Jay's just breaking equipment. Jack's gonna have to come in here and just you know rattle you off here. Uh, <laughs> still talking about the, uh, but man, oh, what you um, what do you guys think of the Cardinals side of it though? Because a lot of people were talking about Packers, but then boom, Larry Fitzgerald. Larry, that, that was run. crazy. <laughs> Larry, yeah, yeah, Larry, Larry Fitzgerald kind of cemented his Hall of Fame bust right there with that with that playoff game. Yeah, I mean he was already a Hall of Famer, but now I think it's kind of you know set in stone now. Uh, I you know a lot of people got on the Packers uh, for that for leaving Larry Fitzgerald open. Yeah, but that's not. I mean, if if you know, I don't know, defensive football just you're really not expecting Larry Fitzgerald. The play is not designed for Larry Fitzgerald to run halfway across the field. Yeah, and Carson Palmer to pull like a Russell Wilson type play, <laughs> you know, and throw it across his body. Yeah, that's just it's just I'm not gonna call it lucky, but it's just a broken play that there's really nothing you can do about it if you're the Packers. And we do got a. Uh comment coming in through the live stream from someone watching online through video they say uh do any of the commentators think it was a mistake to kick should green bay have gone for two i agree i think they should have gone for two there it is uh can't say the name I, because it's an interesting username i, I but. think oh, i mean my my thinking <laughs> i think you go for it you have the momentum mm-hmm, you're on yeah. the road you have no wide receivers yeah. and, and you know and, and, and it's tough when when you go in the overtime as well it's yeah. just like yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you know, air giving Arizona, I just wouldn't want to want the opportunity of giving Arizona another chance. If I'm the coach, I'm more yeah. than comfortable living saying, "All right, we're going to win. We're either going to win or we're going to lose here. I'm more than okay with going for it. You got to be you got to have some guts sometimes and, you know, you got to risk it. You yeah. got to risk it to get the Would biscuit." Chip Kelly Bruce thing Arian to do. Says, yeah, uh, but you know, okay, a guy like Belichick, Belichick goes for it. Yeah, or, exactly. I mean, I, I, mean, I don't know. If, I, I mean, I can't say he'd definitively go for it, but that's something Belichick would think of. And you know, you got to be able to take risks in yeah. those situations. And I think if you're the Cardinals or if you're the Packers, I'm sorry, you gotta you gotta take that risk. Get out, get out of there. You're banged up. You have no healthy receivers yeah. to play yeah, yeah, in that right. overtime. Well, you gotta get out of I, there. I think you just stick Fat Boy Eddie Lacy in there and you just let him yeah. run him. Just try to get some holes. <laughs> well, there. I mean, I don't know. Eddie Lacy might not be able to make those two yards. <laughs> might without, not be able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> needs oxygen. Yeah. No, I, that's something we talked about uh, on last week's show. Was the whole skill position thing. No one doubted Aaron Rodgers, but. Yeah. 
the Packers, you know, he doesn't have that much to work with. And I think to, yeah. they got he got the maximum amount of uh you know, Jeff good plays Janus out of and them. Jared Aberderis <laughs> yeah. starting a playoff game yeah. for the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. <laughs> I think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The power of the James Jones's hoodie just couldn't just came prevail. prevailed. Yeah, what do you what top. do you guys think of the hoodie? Yeah, what do you guys think of the James I Jones hoodie? I hate the hoodie. <laughs> I think it's so stupid. Okay. I think it looks kind of dumb, like when he's wearing it indoors. You know, like yeah. at Arizona, it's just like, dude, what are you doing? But like, I can get it when you're on the road at Minnesota when he first busted it out. Cause yeah. it was, you know, no, it was, no, it was before that. Though. He's been doing all season. Minnesota, but I mean, it just, it's not a good look. I think it was maybe like week 15 is when he started yeah, putting it's, it it's on. Not a, it's not a good look. Yeah. Not at all. So would that count as horse collaring if you just grab that hoodie? Yes, yeah, that's, that's what we were. That's what we were no, talking about. I don't think it is. I think it is because the dreadlocks are fair. Yeah, just be like, yeah, just be like, yeah. It's it'd be kind of like pulling the hair. That's yeah. what that's what I said on radio last week. It looks really dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got actually uh, we got a notification here. We got Danny Amendola fined twenty three thousand dollars for a blinds that hit on Jamel Fleming last week, and I hate. Uh, Danny Amendola, he's the worst. I just want to throw that out there. Good. I hope yeah. he should get fined more, and he should get suspended for this next game. But that's just my opinion. Tell us how you really feel. Yeah, not a fan of him now. <laughs> oh wait, heads up. All Eesh. right. Sorry, breaking news off of NFL news. real quick. Uh, Cleveland has fired David Blatt, NBA. Wait, what? Wait. Yep. What? Are you serious? Yep. Just from Waj, uh, four minutes ago. Second Whoa. string breaking wow. news. Wait, are you sure? I haven't gotten Hold anything. Up. I haven't gotten an update yet. I'm. Yep. Oh, Twitter. we got Andre. Oh, wow. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. That's the breaking news Eagle Screech. David Blatt out of here? Well, I mean, what? All right, I know who's head coach now. It's LeBron. Luke Walton. <laughs> no. Guys, it's LeBron. Hey, yeah. you know, little conspiracy theory here. Steve Kerr comes back tonight. Warriors uh, yeah. fire Luke Walton. Luke Walton hired by the Cavaliers. <laughs> <laughs> I. They, no, they trade Luke yeah, Walton. Yeah, trade. They trade Luke Walton for... Uh, Anderson Varejao for Luke Walton. Anderson Varejao in a first-round draft pick because the Cavs love giving first-round draft picks away. I cannot, wa- I cannot wait for the Cavs to trade away all their first-round picks, and they're going to be like the Nets 2.0. Right. <laughs> because the Nets don't have a... They don't have a first-round pick all the way through 2018. Because of that trash to, decision that was made. To get KG and Paul, and Paul Pierce. Pierce yeah. And their old when they were 30, when they were back shelf yeah. moldy cheese back in the fridge prime. Yeah, but anyway. <laughs> moldy cheese. Oh, man. I can't believe David Black got fired. That, that is strange. Yeah, that After is. beating the Clippers last night, too. Poor guy. Didn't even go out we're on breaking a... breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> the first radio show in all of uh, sports media to break the news. I bet you we, we're, we're probably, probably in the top there. like probably 100 there. at least. Probably in the top 100. Yeah, I'm willing to go top fifty. Ooh, second street I'll, I'll put it out there. Here you are, groundbreaking. <laughs> but wow, that's crazy. We will get into that for the second portion of the uh, yeah. NBA portion of the show. But uh, back to NFL. Me and Jeff have something to talk about. There it is, Seahawks. <laughs> talking about the Seahawks here. <laughs> Take us through the ride, the emotional roller coaster that was that game all right. of just the pits of depression to the the shrines of hope. So I'll take it all the way back to last Tuesday. Uh, oh, we got a little walking, story I was time. Walking the class, and I was walking the class with my roommate Ethan, um, and just we're kind of talking like, "Oh yeah, we got Martin Luther King, you know, day off on Monday." I'm like, "Oh," and like a light goes off. I'm like, "All right, I'm going up to Seattle. Got family up there. Gonna go watch the game in Seattle. Be with my fellow twelves. You know, embrace it." <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I was in Seattle. Could have gone out that night, celebrated exactly. nice. Exactly. Disgusting. Exactly. Hit the Seattle bars. Um, first half was more, first quarter was. More or less was that so, trash. Was so actually, bad. that trash can is the featured episode of that first half on <laughs> Seven right, Sports. We'll, we'll, get a, first, we'll get another that trash first can quarter was here. so bad, but. Uh, unbelievably I, I mean, bad. Believe, Those I, turnovers, I mean, unbelievably so bad. It was, I, I mean, yeah, it was just, it was bad, but I was not freaking out honestly like i'm the only one in my in i'm at my uncle's house and the only one sitting there they're all freaking out like it's over it's over i said nope they're gonna get a touchdown they're gonna be back in this we're gonna have a shot we got russell wilson because i mean if you watch the seahawks every week and if you watched them with russell wilson he's gonna find a way to do something at least make it interesting at least make it interesting That's- yeah and when it gets to and it got very it got interesting. interesting, you know, thirty-one twenty-four, and all we need is a all we need is a an onside kick there. Yeah. Um, Can you just imagine those two two times that we in the red zone when we went for it and said just 
two field goal opportunities. I know, you know, it, it, I mean, if that, yeah, that's a key right there. There's a lot of things, you know, if Russell doesn't throw that pick six, oh, uh, yeah. you know, it's, it's a different game. If, if, I if, hate if, Luke. if Pete, Luke if has Pete the kick, power if, of the force, if Pete kicks a field goal on, you know, inside his own 30, rather than going for it on fourth and five. And if uh Hauschka hits the field goal before yeah. halftime and you go into halftime 31 to six, it's, it's a totally different game. Um, but I mean, I learned very early on in football. You don't, if it's a woulda, coulda, shoulda game, you don't win. And that was a woulda, coulda, shoulda game for the Seahawks. There was, there was just so too many things that went poorly for them, uh, and they just they weren't able to come. They 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 just ran out of time. Uh, I wasn't sad after the game. I I was pretty proud to be a Seahawks fan. Yeah, it was you almost know? like it was the like, best playoff loss we could have gotten honestly, out of that situation. Yeah, like was. you didn't I mean, feel bad after that game. Yeah, Any feel, Seahawks playoff loss is a good loss in my opinion. <laughs> hey, uh, how about them Chiefs? Right? Yeah. Uh, I was just happy to get the playoffs. Um, <laughs> No, I mean, no, I mean, you said it, Jake. Like, I was, I was genuinely proud to be a Seahawk fan after that. I was like, you know, we battled back. Russell Wilson looked like the MVP candidate that he was for the second half of the season. Mm-hmm. In that second half, uh, Seattle just got it going too late, and you know, we'll see. Seattle still got a young core. I, I still think they're going to be able to make some noise here. But I think we're also in agreement that that was the last game that we will see Marshawn in a Seahawks oh, jersey. Yeah. Uh, if not just, NFL uh, jersey, yeah, period. Marshall's about, Marshall's about to retire. Marshall's about to retire. Yeah, go, to, go to go back to. He Cal. got his ring. He doesn't care. Just go well, hang out. Schneider came go out to think today or it yesterday. Today. It was today. He came out on on seven ten ESPN in Seattle. He said that you know he thinks Marshawn's going to retire. So it looks like that's Marshawn's final game as a Seahawk, which is sad. I I'm, I'd rather I'd rather have him retire than go play for some other team just because I like yeah. Marshawn so much. I would much. not mind seeing him play for the Oakland Raiders to be honest. Brian's been saying that for like two years now. Have him go home play for Oakland. I would. That was the only place I'd like to see him play. And then Oakland like, then moves to San Antonio, and then yeah. <laughs> or or the Trash. Raiders move up to Portland. I'm wow. kidding. That's not going to happen. But there was a rumor a while Curveball, ago. Huh? There was a rumor. I do remember that. There was a rumor. Yeah. Like, Al, are Mark Davis is going to bring the Raiders to the to Portland? I'm like, no, come on, dude. Not Portland gonna Raiders. The the Portland fans still just you know like, they, they would hope always, for it. Al, always hold out hope. They always hold out some hope. But as long with players, look, Portland isn't going to have an NFL team ever. No, no. Oregon's better off without an NFL team. With those college, the college football programs that they have here, you know, I think it's best for the state of Oregon to just keep it with the college football. What I think would be pretty cool if the NFL adopted like a developmental league and put a de- and put a D league team in Portland. Ooh, I would like a D league. Yeah, so like, <laughs> okay, that'd be great. The idea was thrown out on Dan Patrick's show earlier this week, but you get eight teams. Four teams to a team, kind of like the NBA D League, and you put yeah. you know four in the West. I think you had Portland, uh, Vegas, San Antonio. I think Sacramento um, was the other one, and then four teams in the East. And you you know four teams on there, and you get basically all the undrafted guys. They play in the spring. You play you know you play your seven games or whatever. That way, it leads up to training camp. Teams can get a look at the undrafted guys, and yeah. then you can you know you get first dibs at signing people. I like it. I like that idea. I think it'd be, would, I think it'd be for really it. interesting. Yeah, that would be really interesting. <clears throat> Way more interesting than the D League for yeah. uh, basketball. Yeah. Hey, man, you're telling me you hey. don't want to watch Jimmer for debt? Hey, oh, so, hey. the Steph Curry of the D League. See, in it's, fact. Just, it's just it's tough, tough so, when when you know, like you have Jimmer just not doing anything productive in an NBA game, and then going and scoring like forty in the D League. But like, well, it's just such hey, a man. Talent if we didn't have off. the D League, we wouldn't have stars like Jeremy Lin. All right. <laughs> Some some the teams though, some teams though are utilizing the D League though. Yeah, uh, I, some teams do it really well. Spurs, the Spurs, because yeah. yeah. you know what, the Spurs are really good. Yeah, you know, like real te- good teams like the teams like the Lakers real who good. don't have a good stable you know front office don't use the D League well. Mm. It, it, I mean, it's no shock that a team like the Spurs is really good at finding international players and finding D League talent. Yep. No, they're it, smart. I, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, there are some teams using it way more and way better than others. Yeah, but uh. Overall, but D League in the NFL, great idea. Yeah. I would love it. I totally, I, I would love that. it too. But you I know don't who think... would hate it? Oh well, Antoine Randall. L. Antoine. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> All right, to finish out our NFL picks, let's talk about this weekend games coming up. Who do you guys got? Well, give me a game first. Yeah. So All right, let's, let's go, go Card- Cardinals first. All right, we'll go Cardinals. Jake wants to go Cardinals. I'm feeling Cardinals I guess, first. I, I want to get Cardinals. this out of the way. I'll start it off. I'm on the Cardinals. I I love the Cardinals. That's what I, we were just discussing. Yeah. That how can you not like? Is is anyone not rooting for the Cardinals? I mean, unless you're like a Panther fan. Shout out scum. to Jack Campbell, my buddy. But, yeah, um, scum. Oh yeah. Hate, did you? Uh, we'll get into that. But did you have to? Because last time you were on the, the show, so update on the bet. Uh, yeah, I haven't done it yet. 
Okay. Because what happened was I went home and I'm like all prepared to do it. And I tell the girlfriend like, hey, you know, I made a belt with Jack. Got to do some weird facial hair. And that yeah. did not go over well. <laughs> um, so I pushed it back to a later time. But it will happen okay. when it does. You guys will get the you should, uh, it. When, it, when it does happen, you should tweet it at Second String Sports. Oh, I will. Don't and, worry. And when, it, when the facial hair is complete, uh, you have to tweet it at uh, and be like, here it is. I actually I got offered by him today via Snapchat. He said double or nothing on the bet. Either Ooh. I do it for a week or I get nothing because I'm on the Cardinals. Okay. I, and I don't know if I want to take it or not. It's kind of a hard one. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Panthers are good, but I am on the Cardinals. I do think they're going to win. I'm a big Bruce Arians fan. If you haven't seen his football life, I'd recommend watching it. I don't know how Bruce you watch ca- that. He's and like, kind of a like weird the fellow, though. I <laughs> he's a strange little fan. Just, <laughs> dude, Bruce Arians is, the, is just the man, though. I, I don't know. I really like Bruce Arians a lot. Yeah. He's, yeah. Uh, so, what do you got here, Brian? Who's you got? Your I got Cardinals. Um, I think they have so many weapons on that team. It so is they're hot so right Carolina, now. But and uh, and you can't not want to see Larry Fitz and Carson succeed. Exactly. You can't hate them. You yeah. can't. Yeah, Carson's been through so much throughout his career. Give him a ring, like yeah. come on. <laughs> and I would just love to see him get a ring before he's done. He's thirty-five. Exactly. Now. Fitz and, too. And he's thirty-six and, actually. Fitz yeah, is what thirty-one. No Fitz is thirty in his thirties. Thirty. Uh, something, thirty-two. I, I got to interrupt a little bit though. But Tyron Lue has agreed to a multi-year deal to become the head coach of the Cavs. Oh, wow! Wow! What the wow! This is all happening so fast. This is. My head is I spinning. Second string is doesn't know what to handle with this. <laughs> Breaking <laughs> eagle. Breaking <laughs> eagle is just striking. Yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> that's so Tyron Lue. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that's that's was interesting. It, wasn't he with the Clippers last year? I mean, not like playing, but wasn't no, he? No, he was with the Cavs yeah, last he was, year. Uh, you know, and they, I mean, there were rumors last yeah. year that, that players wanted Tyron Lue to be the head coach. Was he the guy that Allen Iverson stepped over? Okay, look, let me up? let me break this down. All right, Tyron Lue fell. All right, Iverson <laughs> did not like cross him up. He tripped, and then Iverson stepped over him. Everyone wants to say, "Oh, Iverson crossed him over, then he stepped over him." No, he just fell. All right, watch it again. <laughs> Doesn't matter. The Lakers won that series four one anyway. All right, that's where I was getting the whole LA thing from. I think. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he did play at the Lakers. Yes. Yeah. So that's I. Wow. It's kind of weird. That's very. Yeah. That's very yeah, odd. That's though. My head be spinning. I'm kind of interested to hear the. I did not see that coming. I'm kind of interested to hear the the post conference or any uh, the news. reasoning behind it. Yeah, I mean, because re- they won by double digits last night boom against the Clippers. Yeah, which is so weird. You know, I, I I I'd understand it if it's Monday night after you lose to Golden State by 34, but to, like you know to keep them on for the rest of the week and then fire them after a win. Yeah, I mean, like that just doesn't make any sense. Well, I think what Cleveland ultimately should have done is just. Not let David Blatt on just for this Poor long. guy. He's that girl that's like, you know, asking you to go to homecoming. Well, you know, he like, gets hired, oh, maybe I might be busy. He gets hired be. before LeBron even decides to go to Cleveland. And then they just go with, the, mm, we don't know if oh, he's going to be able to keep him. It's LeBron's coach, whatever. It's it's tough. It's tough. But <laughs> poor little David. <laughs> Probably a little Feel Davey. bad for a guy. Probably a little Davy. He won't get another coaching job. Either. No, I'll bet you he goes. He's to going the back Nets. to Euro. I'll bet you he goes to the Nets. Prokhorov, uh, David Black uh, connection to the Nets. There it is. I mean, <laughs> hey, you, you heard it there first. Cool yeah. show right there. Um, Jake, who you got for your prediction against the Cardinals? Did you already say? Yeah, I got the Cardinals. Grant, did you say? I didn't. Um, uh, I'm gonna go Cards as well. All right. I, and before we like move past this, can we just address what is everyone's opinions on the Panthers here? I uh, don't like them, but I I don't like them purely because one of my best friends back home like is a Panther fan. They're really good. I got a lot of respect for them. Yeah. I I mean after watching that first half, they were they I mean they were awesome in the first half against yeah. Seattle. Um, I don't want to I don't really want to see them win a Super Bowl. I just I like the players. I like the Cardinals a lot more than I like. The I didn't Panthers mind the Panthers point. early on, like I was all for it. They yeah. just started bothering me more and more, and it's almost like they're becoming the Seahawks that we were, like fan wise, when we won our Super Bowl. It's kind of like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, you're, I, it's too much. Like, it's, it's too much. Like you're waiting for the Panthers to go away. It's like, all right, you're a nice story, <laughs> Panthers. Like, go, away. You know, go away, whatever. You know, like let you know, let like Seattle and like the guy, you know, the teams who have been there before, yeah. kind of do it. And the Panthers just won't go away. They won't go they're away. No. They won't go uh, away. Right. Camp, I mean, it is Cam's a, the MVP. It's for a very sure. strong possibility they're gonna. Um, who you got here, Grant? Play very well. Uh, I picked Arizona. Oh, you did? Yeah. But right. 
I think honestly, I, I don't know. I haven't seen. I think Jared Allen's out, right? Yeah, I, I know he's a broken yeah. foot. I just uh, didn't see like. Rivera announced today. He's out. Okay, didn't see that. Um, I think that's gonna hurt them. So this is what the, my predictions going on throughout this NFL playoffs have been absolutely horrid. Uh, I will say, Man. mainly because I think I've been going against the teams that I want to win, and that just has not been working. I've, uh, you know, I picked the Bengals beat the Steelers. That didn't happen. I really wish the Bengals uh, won that I mean, game. I should have told you that. You should have had me I in to tell the, you that. I picked the Bengals. The, I picked, Come on. I picked the Vikings to beat the Seahawks. Dude, didn't what? Happen. Uh, hey. Uh, Blair Walsh, this shit in the HD. Come on. The Blair Walsh project. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go against my logic of who I want to win. And I'm going to go with the Panthers because I want the Cardinals to win, but I think now the Panthers, I think they're just going to be too tough, honestly. I, <sighs> the, tough. I mean, the, that, the, the they, biggest they, thing in this game is going to be the pass rush because you yeah. saw against Seattle last week. I mean, in that first in that first quarter, Russell could not get anything off. You yeah. know? And if, if Carson Palmer is getting sacked, you know, if, it, if, it's, if it's anything like it was last week in that first half, I think Carolina is yeah. going to win. Carolina just doesn't have the secondary to hang on. And play, you the know, play. Is it's garbage. Yeah. They got Cortland Finnegan, who was retired halfway through the season. Now <laughs> he, needs to, he needs to retire back. again. Yeah. Uh, but the way I, I don't know. I just, and then uh, I'll say my other prediction here right after this. But I just think this is ultimately where it's heading. I think it's just a Panthers Patriots Super Bowl, and that's my opinion. <laughs> I will be so uh, angry if that happens. But I just think I don't think I saw it from the beginning of the playoffs or even maybe in the beginning of the season. But I think that's just the road we've been on for a while now. I think that's just ultimately what it's going to happen. And it's just, I'm not going to be happy about it at all. That, that's, but that's my prediction here. I think that's what's both going to happen. I think the, I think the Patriots are going to dismantle the Broncos. Uh, maybe not dismantle, but I just don't think the Broncos are going to be able to put an, enough points on the board. It gets a Seahawks. It gets a Steelers team, and they had all they could do was really kick field goals. Granted, the win uh, was a factor a little bit in that game, but I don't see the Broncos being able to put enough points up against. Uh, uh, the Patriots at all, so that's my prediction there. So, so I think so. Moving on, you're going pa- Pats. I'm going Pats. Moving on, I got Pats, and I, you know that's it's not what I want. It's not what I wanted from the start, but I think that's just what we're going to be able to get. Yeah. So, <laughs> can you just imagine Cam Newton in the Super Bowl? Ugh. Just I, I what don't know. he would do. I, look, well, Jake hates players like that. Jake just, which can't, is so weird. Like but, I could see Jake being like the biggest Cam Newton fanboy. Yeah. False. Yeah. I'm not saying you are. I just could see it. I think Jake doesn't like a lot of the hyped up kind of magic, or yeah. not magic, but just like stuff like that, that kind of happens. Jake, though. I don't, you know, I never was a huge LeBron fan. Never. No, I mean I'm with you there. Like, the Jake only was Jake was a huge LeBron fan. If you go back and stalk his Facebook, oh, you see oh, LeBron oh, T-shirts. It's great. Oh, I know. It's great. Uh, and then you listen to stuff. How do you now. know about that, Jeff? Uh, we're friends on Facebook, and I mean, come on. Yeah. Like, uh, if, if there's anyone in this room who says, "Oh, I've never Facebook stalked," yeah, you're a liar. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, and if you go, oh yeah, true. Uh, Jake, I was a big LeBron fan. Jake was a huge. But now you hear him now. The just, only oh, hype player I've ever right succumbed now. to is Jeremy Lin. I was on that bandwagon hardcore. You, yeah. and, you, you and Josh Warden? I was not on it at all. I thought it was hilarious. I just knew it, it was, was hila- going to end. Oh, I knew it was going to end, yeah, too. I just thought it was, it was hilarious. Like, yeah. It was crazy how that happened, though. For but I, I do agree with Logan. I've never been one to Cam Newton. Just added, I mean, he's amazing, but Just the other day, we, too played, much. we played Madden, and Jake was like, I'm playing with Cam. So, you know, Jake's opinion... It, I mean, it's it, Madden. It, it, it He's good of, on Madden. I, I, I'm just curious. <laughs> it's just, uh, just because, I don't know. I'm just, just throwing it out there. Uh, Grant, who do you got? Uh... I'm gonna go Pats as well. Yeah, uh, I think Tom Brady just too much. I don't. I, okay, I really do want Broncos to win. I think it would be so cool to have Peyton Manning just go out on a Super Bowl. Oh, win. Be, so you, what's your, your idea? Awesome. What's your I ideal Super Bowl? Manning. My ideal Super Bowl would be uh, Denver. Uh, I don't know. I would honestly like to see Carolina in a Super Bowl. Oh, I, I don't I mind that Carolina would be really as much. Entertaining. As I don't mind Carolina as much as everybody else does. Yeah, I, I don't I really mind them. Don't, I don't get it at all. Um, I, yeah, I don't get it. I, I don't get like all the all the hate that people or all the shade that I, people throw on I Cam think, Newton. But yeah, I'm I'm not the biggest Cam Newton fan. But that guy is he's fun to watch. He's fun yeah. to watch. He's play. entertaining. Like, there's no one out there who can do what Cam Newton does. You know. Yeah. Um. And <laughs> he's 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 really good. He's 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 gonna be the MVP MVP for a reason. They yeah. have another six six two hundred fifty pound quarterback who can run like a four six. I know. <laughs> there's yeah. There's no one out there. So yeah. yeah, I'm going New England, but and uh, Arizona for my two picks. But I would like to see Denver, um, in there. So we'll see. 
I think it's going to be Arizona Patriots as well. As yeah. much as I don't want it to be that. I mean, I want it to be Cardinals come out on top. But like you said, I wouldn't mind seeing Peyton Manning coming out for one last ring before it's all said and done to have him win his second Super Bowl and then have him retire. Because I do like Peyton Manning. But if it's Peyton Manning, I'd like to see it be the Panthers, honestly, because I don't want to see the Arizona Cardinals go down. So, But I think it's going to be Arizona Patriots. Okay. All right. I do not like Peyton Manning. I'm just, I'm not the biggest Peyton Manning fan here. Kyle Rinker, you got something to say about that? Bring it on, Kyle. Kyle tweeted Jeff right now. Uh, I'm just not a big Peyton Manning fan. Uh, I think the Pats are better. One little uh, tidbit in that. Way better. The Pats, but the Pats haven't won a road playoff game since 2006. Interesting. That's 10 years. I mean, yeah. and Grant, you know, obviously they're, they, they got a lot of games at home. Um, I think the Patriots are the better team. There's just something about this Bronco team and I, I think they get it done. All right. I just I I don't know. I think that I think the defense is good enough to kind of muck it up. Von Miller and Demarcus Ware are good enough to get to Brady, which is going to be so hard because Brady just gets it out so quickly to Edelman and Amendola. Um, but I'm going Broncos, Broncos, Cardinals in the Super Bowl. These are two tough games to pick. Yeah, in my opinion, I don't think it is. I think the toughest one is the Carolina game. I don't think the Broncos. Great. I don't. I can't see the Broncos getting being the best. I, being the I can't. I don't either. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't either. But wait. Still. Intern Mook, who do you have? I got the Pats easily. There it is. Taking out the Broncos. The Pats are a three-point favorite, which, I mean, at Denver. Yeah. And so. who, else, who else you got? Um, my heart says the cards, so yeah. I'm going to go with the cards. Mm-hmm. But Kay. I can see it being like a three-point game. Yeah. And the cards making like a last second drive or something. Oh, I, I see huge heartbreak in that game for the Cardinals. Yeah, I can just see it being really tough. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's a hard one to say because like, I feel like you want the cards to win, but then like the Panthers have looked so dominant. Yeah, I, I don't. But think maybe some of the momentum from the second half uh, will like bring the Panthers down a little bit. I don't know. Well, yeah, I don't. I don't think either game will be a blowout. I think they're both gonna they're both gonna come down to the last drive. I think whoever has the ball last. Okay. Type of deal. Okay. And there it is. There it is. Championship Sunday. Can't wait. Yep. All right. Well, that's enough of NFL playoffs. We're going to take another PSA break. And when we come back, we're ending out the show with the thing we do best. A little NBA discussion. All-star talk. And a little special segment. Kobe's 81. Not that segment, but <laughs> we, we will give that to Jeff just to appease his, his LA fans listening on uh, 88.7 or watching online right now. Jeff's got a, <laughs> Jeff's got a big LA following, right, Jeff? I mean, I'm kind, when, uh, of a, I'm kind of a big deal. When me and Jeff uh, <laughs> hooked up in L.A. this summer, we were walking the beach and just you signed, like, what, five autographs? Uh, you know, the, the the people of Newport Beach like me. Um, <laughs> they were all, they were they wanted they wanted the autograph. They're like, hey, it's Jake and Jeff from the Beaver Sports Show. We're huge fans. We're like, oh, please, like, no autographs. But sorry, fans, but, you know. You had to do it to him. Yeah, I had, had to do, to do it, it to him. him you know, and, well, you know, even our fans on Twitter, you know, you sometimes you just got to say sorry, guys. Yeah, shout out to that one specific fan who <laughs> she's a, she's into me, Logan and Jeff. Uh, if you're listening right now, yeah, she I probably that. is. That was, that was <laughs> she stalked her tweet from like three months ago and said, well, now. Yeah, I mean, that was a that was from a, a while ago. <laughs> that was man. They're getting in there. <laughs> All right. We're taking a PSA break. You're listening to Second String Sports. Much more to come. NBA Talk. You're listening to Jake, Logan, and Grant with special guests. Stay tuned. The sun, when it shines, is our primary source of vitamin D. However, during the winter time, the sun's UVB rays are not happening, and our bodies can't take as much vitamin D. Do you have trouble waking up in the morning? Have feelings of hopelessness or trouble getting sleep at night? According to the World Health Organization, these may be symptoms of SAD, Seasonal Affective Disorder, which is mild to severe depression, which can be triggered by low levels of vitamin D in the wintertime. Vitamin D supplements are an option to optimize your lifestyle, but most importantly, get out in that sun as much as possible this winter. Brought to you by Stoker's Vita World. The Corvallis Area MPO brings you your daily bike safety tip. Tip number one, share the road. Ride in the bike lane or right side of the travel lane whenever possible. If there is no bike lane or the lane is narrow, you may ride in the middle of the lane just like a vehicle. 
Always use hand signals and be predictable. Remember, drive your bike. Bikes are vehicles too. I'm Sherry Shepard. You probably know me best as a co-host on The View. More importantly, I'm a mom. If you're pregnant or a new mom, you can get timely expert information to help keep your baby healthy, something every mother wants. Through a free service called Text for Baby, women get health tips sent directly to their cell phones to help them care for their babies through the first year. Just text BABY, B-A-B-Y, to 511411. That's BABY, B-A-B-Y, to 511411 for the health of your baby. The Corvallis Area MPO brings you your daily bike safety tip. Tip number three, using sharrows. Sharrows are located on slow-moving roadways where cars and bicyclists can safely share the road. Use signals and safely assert your position in the center of the travel lane. Remember, drive your bike. Bikes are vehicles, too. And we're back. Second string sports finishing off the show here. We're going to get into it. Uh, we got some live tweets coming in and live posts, too. We got a. Uh, oh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry, cameraman Mike was confusing me. Uh, Jeff, you got some tweets coming in directed to you. Well, Kyle tweeted at me. Kyle Rinker116 uh, tweeted at me. He said, Jeff, spelled my name wrong, first of all. Uh, we got the best defense. Vaughn Miller is going after Brady. Manning will score just enough. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. Kyle, I picked the Broncos to win. I just said I don't like Peyton Manning. So just, yeah. so just letting Kyle, you know. I, was on, I picked the Broncos. So yeah, uh, Kyle, if you don't know what you're talking about, you might want to reconsider before you tweet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shame on you, Kyle. Shame on you. Who's Kyle? Jeb. No. Oh. <laughs> Oh, he's gonna hop in the chat real quick now. Um, so, okay, what we got? What we got next? We got some NBA. Oh yeah, let's get into it. Uh, we want to kick it off some All Star discussion. I mean, we have discussed the uh, big blab breaking news recently. So, man, All Star voting. The official lineups have been announced for the Eastern and Western Conference. Yep. Agreements, disagreements. Uh, Grant, you have it pulled up. For, uh, if you want. Let me get it up. Or, I don't you know, Western Cars. I want to hear I mean, Jeff's opinion on the, uh, head, the mass amount of tweets coming into Kobe. How do you feel about Kobe starting in the All Star game? I got no problem with it. Um, I mean, look, Kobe's a legend in the game. It's it's just like Derek Jeter a couple years ago starting in the MLB All Star game. Uh, if anyone really wants to get that upset, they're just a Kobe hater, and you know, yeah. what, deal with it. One more year, you can deal with it, and he's gone. You uh, know, he'll probably start the game being the game for like five minutes, and then. Maybe I don't know, Co- man. No, Kobe's got four All Star MVPs. Yeah. I could see Kobe coming out right. and trying to kind of like trying to show it to all the young kids, like, hey, you know, I'm I'm Kobe. Try and stop this. And yeah, but uh, at the same time, I could see Kobe just coming in for five minutes. Yeah, and I, could, I could see that too. Starting playing for five minutes, sitting in the game, maybe coming in like the third quarter, coming playing for like three minutes and I, calling I, it good. I think he'll play really loose, just not. You know, he'll just be laughing, having a good time. Yeah. Um, I'm okay with Kobe getting it. Kind of like, like the Jordan All-Star game. Yeah, exactly. Jordan got in when he was in his last season. Yeah. Uh, the only like the only one I would say you could really make an argument, at least in the West, is Draymond Green over Kawhi Leonard. But you're kind of you're kind of pulling hairs there. Both both have had amazing seasons. Yeah. I got no problem with Kawhi well, Leonard if, being if an All Star starter. If you're going by the voting, you know Zaza Pachulia should yeah. be starting over Draymond Let's Green. Put Zaza. Can you in. believe that? <laughs> I love crazy. it. I think that's hilarious. It is hilarious, but come on. I I, I don't understand. I, I it's Dallas, his home country, man. Dallas, yeah. Was it home country? Like does Dallas fans? home country votes. There's no way Dallas fans got him that much, unless yeah. like got a tweet from Justin Bieber, but he's Zaza, so. Hey man, never say never. Yeah. Never say never. <laughs> hey, oh, no. quick little throw in there by Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> sing siren. I don't know. I'm not finding a siren now that we switched up the soundbite booth. Yeah, brutal. Oh, such Gotta a shame. Find that. Um, any any controversy you got here, Jake? Anybody you want to roast? 
I'm still trying to think. I got the uh, the row segment next to me. It'll come to me. Once All we right. start talking to NBA, it'll come to me. All right. Uh, so we got, yeah, as you mentioned, we got, we got like uh, the East as well. We got LeBron James. Paul George. George Dwayne Wade. Kyle, Kyle Lowry. Lowry. Yeah. Well deserved by the. Yeah. yeah Kyle well Lowry. deserved. Kyle but what do you guys and think Mello. about uh, oh, Carmelo yeah. and yeah. Mello, whatever? Yeah. Mello's a staple in the All Star game. One he'll thing he'll put up like eighty points. Dude, honestly, Mello's like Mello's like the quintessential great All Star game player. Yeah, like good for like Mello can come out and jack up forty five shots, but then yeah. you know the next next day playing in Boston or whatever, they're gonna lose. the Remember, game. it was last year when Mello would play in the All Star game and just like yeah. went all out, and then like a couple days later, he just said, "Yeah, I'm done. I'm season. done. Yeah, I'm done. Yeah, I'm yeah, done. Yeah. Put up forty five in the All Star game. See ya. Yeah. yeah, Knicks fan. <laughs> Knicks fans were." Really mad. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'd be really mad if I were a Knicks fan too after last season. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well. No, man. Tank the season. Look what you got now. No, but you know they they, yeah, they screw. I mean, Porzingis. obviously now. I mean, getting Porzingis looks good, but they won like those last two games of the season to put him into the fourth spot when they could have had you know the first pick. Yeah. You know, and it's the way the ping pong balls fall. Or the way David Stern makes them fall. <laughs> <laughs> David Stern's got some weight in those balls. I think if they, I think if, <laughs> I think if the, oh man, <laughs> I think if the ghost commissioner of David Stern really wanted, I think he'd probably want the Lakers to have the number one okay. pick. That's just my opinion. No, I've been like, I've been on this like the last two years. Lakers have been in the lottery. I watched the lottery and just think, all right, somehow the NBA is going to get this right and give the Lakers the number one pick, and we'll get Ben Simmons. That's just kind of my thinking here. They're, they're going to reward the Lakers for not fully tanking like the Sixers and say, all right, Sixers, you guys like went all in and made it way too obvious. Lakers, you're not obvious enough. Like, here you go. First round, first pick. Get Ben yeah, Simmons. Yeah, we, we've mentioned Ben Simmons uh, a couple times on the show. Numerous so. times. Yeah. Uh, what else? What are there? Uh, any surprises? Any any big snubs mm-hmm. you guys got? Because not really in the East. I mean, we just talked about it. I mean, Kobe, yeah. Kobe, the only one stats wise. I mean. I, the, the, I, snubs, I, I, the snubs I no will come when the reserves are announced, I think. I think, yeah. Because yeah. right started, now, I think... Yeah. not let a legend play in the, start yeah. in the yeah. NBA All-Star I'm totally fine with all yeah. 10 starters. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine yeah. with it. I'm fine I, with I, it. I was not salty about a single one. I, all it was... It. Someone last year made us really salty that got the, got a I, starter. Kyle Korver got in as a starter yeah. last yeah, year. Yeah, that was very... that was very Al Horford, and Marcus Teague. Or Jeff T got in. Well, they all got in, but I don't think they were starters. They didn't start. I think Korver might have... No, it was just the Hawks. It was just the Hawks hype last year, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think a little bit of the controversy this year in the East would be, I guess, Dwayne Wade over Butler. But even then, you're also uh, looking yeah. at it's Dwayne Wade. It's though. Dwayne Wade. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the Heat aren't bad, and he's obviously the leader of that team. So and it's just it is just a big popularity contest. So exactly. they, they can't. They Man need. Voting. They need the views. They need the voting. Where, yeah. where did Where did Jeremy Lin finish in voting? I'm just curious. <laughs> Interesting. We were. Yeah, we I, joked I'm about that. I'm just curious. I, I mean, because if Zaza's up there in the top five, Jeremy's I gotta imagine be. Jeremy Lin's kind of up there too. Shout out to Jeremy Lin's hair, though. Dude, he, he nearly <laughs> he hurt up someone. Jared yeah. Bayless's eye the other night. That yeah. hair is like it's savage. Watch was, him get in a fight and just. It was Jared Bayless, <laughs> I think. It was. Yeah. Yeah. That was funny. Jared Bayless, man. <laughs> R.I.P. But what was I forget uh, what player uh, gets a pick Jeremy Lin's hairstyle every single game? Really? Yeah, Jeremy Lin doesn't pick the hairstyle. Oh, I really? really hope it's Frank Kaminsky. <laughs> I don't think it's Frank. I don't. I don't know. Mike like might know. That's a, that's a stat that Mike might know. You not remember? All right. Uh, yeah. Call it. Call up Josh Warden. He'll know. Josh will know. Yeah, Josh will know. All right. So still on the uh, on the track of the All Star game. Hasn't been, I, to my knowledge, hasn't been announced yet. Who would your guys' ideal dunk lineup be this year? Ooh, dunk I, asked, lineup? I asked this the other night, wow. actually. Can I just say that a Kristaps would be hilarious? I don't think he'd be, <laughs> like, I don't think he'd be entertaining in a dunk he would contest. Do, he, it's Kristaps. He would do something funny. He would. I, I think, like, he's he seems like a really good, like, in-game dunker, but a guy who's not going to have, like, a whole lot of creativity. Mm. Like, I, I feel like contest. he has creativity. He, when asked if he knew about American culture, he said he watches World Star Hip Hop and listens to Future. Oh, all right. It's well, Chris Stops, man. Personality-wise, he'd be really entertaining. Uh, yeah. yeah, he'd do something funny. Oh, I uh, I would watch Zach Levine. I, yeah, I'm, obviously. Oh, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. He will be back. Guess, He'll be back. I'll yeah. bet you Wiggins will be in it too because it's in Toronto. I'm pretty sure True. Wiggins said last no, year he would wait. he was going to do it. No, it's in I saw Toronto. I saw reports say that Andrew Wiggins uh, is not interested in the dunk contest. Wow. Really? His Come on. Oh, Wiggins would tear it up. Really? Come on, his whole I, squad yeah, would be, be awesome. There. I mean, but like, I mean, like uh, that'd be so great for Minnesota too to get yeah. Levine and Wiggins in there. I want to see Drake in there. 
<laughs> he w- Drake will do something in the All-Star oh, game. He'll come out and do something. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure he will. You know, yeah. I, I want to see Anta Tacumpo. I mean, he did it last year. Cool. He Maybe. did it last year, but he wasn't like as good as I thought. Maybe he was DeRozan be. just for Toronto. Or Terrence Ross. Terrence, Terrence Ross. Ross. It's usually Long the young like guys. Yeah, ago, yeah. So. I mean, Toronto's got a couple guys. There's really no one like I can really. These are all Eastern Conference players. I guess well, Levine. Wiggins, Levine's in the mm-hmm. West, but uh, I mean, I don't really know who else you'd pick uh, to put in there. LeBron, not anymore. Yeah. Uh, one person I'd like to see actually. I don't like him, but I think he'd be great in the dunk contest. Russell Westbrook. Ooh. Oh, he would. He would. Yeah. He'd be outstanding, but he'll never. Wait, yeah. why, why don't you like Russell Westbrook? I'm not a big fan of Russell. Just really? Little, yeah. I'm just not a fan. I'm kind of a big Russ fan, but what? Why not? I, don't know, I, I think it's just the kind of the demeanor of him. Uh, I'm, I'm with you. The way right he dresses. That. I'm with you. I'm also uh, with you. I'm not a huge. So you're Russell getting on fan. me for Cam Newton. Uh, Russell's different. How? How? Yeah, I kinda, I'm with Jake there. How? There's no difference. Well, I well, I mine was from day one. Yours Russell's, is Russell's more intense. Cam's like Cam's so loose that it can just be frustrating to watch sometimes. Where it's like. Damn, he's so good and he's so loose about it. Like, why? I think, well, mine from day one. <laughs> why does he I, not care yet? He's so good. Yeah, exactly. Mine, mine goes all the way back to when he was at UCLA. Really, I'm not. Even, I'm not. Oh, when he lie. like shaved the the basketball. Stemmed the anger. Uh, well, yeah, mine goes back. Jake comes back to like the last year. Yeah, totally different. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. So it's kind of the same thing though. Mm. Not liking someone because of their demeanor. Okay. You can say that. <laughs> right, I'll, yeah, I'll you ask did. you guys a little question here. All right, top five players in the NBA. Because I thought about this the other. I thought about this last night. Because I, I don't know. I like my top five. I don't. I don't I'm curious what you guys would Are you say. Going by position or just no, no just in, it'd be impossible any, any to do by players, position. Any five players in the NBA. Can it just be I, favorites or just like I have three? Yeah, I mean, oh. yeah. Throw it out there. Like what you guys think are the five best players in the NBA? I, I have three down. I haven't thought about a full five. I think. Uh, Steph uh, and LeBron and KD. I think. I yeah. think honestly, I, I think Steph's one. Too. Steph's one right now. Yeah. Uh, I think KD could be number two. I mean, he's having a the argument. big year. Yeah. And you know, I mean, LeBron is LeBron, but yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. It, it seems just seems like every game Durant is putting up these huge stats, where LeBron has you know every once in a while. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think. I think it goes. Uh, Steph, KD, LeBron, I'd have to. You'd have to come back to me for the next two. Yeah, because I okay. haven't really thought that far. But uh, I'll put this. I'm I have the same three as you, and I'm gonna put. Man, that's tough. You're gonna I, go Kawhi. That's what I was gonna do. Kawhi Leonard is my favorite player in the league. Right? Yeah, I, I gotta put Kawhi in there. I uh, and for another one, I think I want to put Paul George. Honestly, I'm with you there too, man. Ah, oh, see, okay, I've got the same. Fa- I got the same four. I don't have Paul George. I put Westbrook at four. Okay, I go Curry, LeBron, KD, Westbrook, Kawhi mm-hmm. Leonard. In order? In that order. Jake. Ooh. Well, obviously, there's the obvious KD, um, LeBron, Curry, and then there's Lillard. <laughs> Shut up. CJ McCollum, Myers Leonard. I would say. <laughs> Westbrook, I don't know. I might have to, I might have to go Paul George. I agree. I agree with Logan over and Kawhi Brian. Leonard. Both I wouldn't put Kawhi over Paul George or Westbrook. What? I wouldn't put Kawhi. Wouldn't take the spot of Paul George or Westbrook in my Playing lineup. Both sides of the court. Hmm? Uh, I I think Kawhi Kawhi I don't know. Is yeah, the best defensive player in the league, in my opinion. Yeah, he's I'm balling out for my fantasy former, team. Former defensive player of the year. Right exactly. Now. Last year. Yep. I think he could win it again. Honestly, NBA Finals MVP. First time All Star now. Yeah, my he's my favorite rising. player in the league right now. I mean, other than like Portland, you yeah. know, Damian Lillard and those guys, but outside of Blazer players, he's my favorite player. Can't deny it. Got to yeah. put. Got to put. Interesting five though. I got to like put Luis Montero in my top five. Oh my! <laughs> <God. laughs> he is a legend. Clint Capella. Yeah, Clint Capella. <laughs> Chris Kamen. <laughs> Myers Leonard. <laughs> Myers no, Leonard, homie. I can. I can definitely see Paul George. In there, I mean, like yeah. when you're taking like young players who are you know kind of next up type thing. I mean, yeah. he's already here, but you know what I'm he's, saying. He's yeah. here in this season, kind of the next wave of after blowing. Kobe and you know all the, all that. I don't know. I think I, I can definitely. You could make an argument for Paul and Kawhi as the last two. I see that fully. All right, I got another one for you guys. All right, do you agree or disagree? LeBron James will not win another NBA title. I don't, I don't think he will. 
I think he wins one more. I don't I think see him. I don't, I don't well. see him beating San Antonio or Golden State. I don't. I, At least I, this, I, this year, maybe no, if you give it the matchup year. this year, no. But I don't. Th- he's not. You can't say that he's not going to win. Uh, another I, I, I know. I, it's it's really hard to go. Yeah, yeah. LeBron's not going to win another one. But it's yeah. plausible. Look, though. It's very look, plausible. It's like I firmly believe he wins one more. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I put one or two. Definitely. I mean, LeBron could go two and eight in, in finals. I'd love it. You know, if LeBron. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah. Me too. I'd, I'd be more than okay with that. Mm. Poor Brown, bro. LeBron fanboy over here, though. Yeah, Jake, what do you got? I'm not a LeBron Mr. fanboy. Mr. Yeah, oh, <laughs> we, we, Facebook, you want to dive back into the archives of the Facebook profile pictures? A little yeah. LeBron I partook James. in the LeBron apparel, so LeBron, does everyone. You had a LeBron James jersey as your profile picture. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's on uh, Facebook, man. We found bruh. it. <laughs> Whatever. I still think he wins one more ring. I'm with Brian. One more. Mm-hmm. Still not better than Kobe. No, I don't think. I mean, more rings does Zaza Pachulia get? <laughs> 18. Yeah. Minimum. <laughs> Bill uh. Russell type. <laughs> All right, so let's let's continue along the NBA train, and uh, let's talk about uh, a little Blazer action now that now that Brian brought it up. I know I know Jeff might have a little two cents to throw in there. Well, I want to talk about... I don't the tra- know, I, that's I, what I was going to get into, the so trade or... You can't even really. It's, it's, it's just Bill it's just, Simmons it's talking. It's just an idea. Yeah. But generally, the topic can stem off of just the idea of trading and shopping CJ in general, which we spoke on last show, is something that is heavily being discussed right now. What do you guys think, Blazer fans? Just talking about shipping him out, testing the water, shipping him out, test even this season, trading him this season if it's the I right package. Believe- not a lot of players want to come to Portland. And they don't. Agency. Yeah, they don't. As, as much as I love the Blazers and love the city of Portland, they don't want to come here. Um, so I think you need to make a trade because we're starting to get out of that tanking level of getting a good draft pick in this upcoming draft. Yeah. And as much as I like McCollum, I don't see him. Honestly, he's playing good starter minutes. I don't think he's a starter in the NBA, in my opinion. I think he's a six-man. Because like a Jamal Crawford defensive type. side, I don't see it's not a strength of his. I'm not saying he can't get there. But he's, he's gotten also, a lot better though. He but has, but you're also looking at he's he six, gives up. He he's only yeah. six four six. He's only about six four at tallest. If, yeah. that, if that his game is just interesting to watch. Exactly. He's the more defensive a, level is he's more of a combo guard. I say you bring off the bench. If you're able to land another two, a re- which good, is it, it that I don't think that's a role he's willing to. Yeah, put and up with that much more. Like I just he, think he, he gets, wants the money. Yeah. And he'll get paid. It's not if it's not from us, it'll be somewhere else. I would. It's tough. See, the real issue is when you have Lillard and McCollum defensively on the court at the same time. I think that they can. You know, they're both unselfish players, and I think like offensively they can coexist well. I mean, they've shown that they can. I mean, they're both putting up huge offensive stats, but defensively, it's 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 a liability, and I I just don't see them, or I guess either of them, improving enough defensively to. Yeah, you know, warrant a huge money for McCollum. So do you I, think? I, okay, and and I love McCollum. Just no, everyone does. There. We don't I mean, agree. He's amazing. Yeah, I don't know. I I do kind of agree. I think coming off the bench is probably no, his mm, maybe future role. I mean, he's doing a great job as a starter yeah. right now. There's no denying that he's putting on big stats. But like I was saying, I think defensively, I think that's that's a little bit of a risk to keep him on and pay him big money. I would trade him. Um, I, I would trade him if, I, if I'm the Trailblazers. Because, well, Bill Simmons had the proposed trade of Kevin Love for CJ McCollum straight up. I would I would do that if I'm Portland, and I would do it too if I'm Cleveland. Oh, in a heartbeat. Yeah, I mean, if you're Cleveland, Kevin Love is it's good. He's not fitting well. But he, I mean, Kevin Love, you saw it. Kevin Love's not going to win a seven game. He's not going to help you win a seven game series against Golden State. Cause well, we don't actually know that. I, That's true. I, he I mean, wasn't you're there. Gonna, you're gonna have to. <laughs> you're gonna have to. Put, Shout out Kelly Olynyk's arm. Yeah, right. Gonna, <laughs> I mean, you're gonna have to put Kevin Love on the bench to go uh, to go at that small lineup. And I think Cleveland is kind of looking desperate now, especially after the firing of David Blatt. Today. Firing of Blatt's huge. I think if you're Cleveland, you do it. You get another shooter to come yeah. in. You can go small now with mm-hmm. you know with Cleveland or with. Four. Yeah, you can put LeBron at the four or even the five if yeah, you really want to do it. I think I think but the Cavs citing Tristan Thompson. I think that just that would push it for me. That uh, was just such an awful 
awful deal to sign yeah, Tristan still, Thompson. Year 82 mil. Yeah. yeah. So if For you put, a rebounder, essentially. Yeah. yeah. So if you put that much money into Tristan Tristan Thompson, I think you automatically, I, you know, you just got to roll with Tristan Thompson's almost. If you, The way they're using Tristan Thompson right now for what they're paying him is mm-hmm. not worth it. So I think no. if you trade Kevin Love and get McCollum, I think that works out for both sides. I, it's I think great so for too. Portland. I mean, it if is. you can go Damian and Kevin Love and have a big that two. That pick and roll. Yeah, that, that pick and yeah. roll. And now, yeah. Kayla, I mean, Kevin I would, Love's uh, playing in a in, in back in Oregon. Yeah. I think that's great for the Blazers. Yeah, but, you know, because uh, I, I, I was there a couple times when Kevin Love came back when he was on the Timberwolves. Uh, I think I went two games. And... You know, just whenever he touches the ball, it's just hilarious how Portland fans. He just, gets booed every time. Uh, he gets it's booed a lot every of time. <laughs> so how would how I don't, would I don't fully understand it, but I'm not fans. a Kevin Love fan either. So how would Portland Port- fans? I think Portland would, would totally embrace. Kevin no, Love once he came, they would embrace. But yeah, right now, exactly. he's oh, just yeah. He's a whiny guy. Yeah, I heard because he played at Lake Oswego, and his hair is absolutely revolting. I remember watching oh, him back I in high school hair. days, and I, I love heard, it. I you heard would. rumors that he wasn't even the most liked person back in his high school. Oh, days he in was the Portland uh, area. not to throw dirt on it, but there's <laughs> been there's yeah. been stories. He's, I mean, from the family he comes from, it's hard to be down to earth. True, it's it is what it is. That's part of the reason he's disliked. But but no, I'm not. I'm. If you get the right opportunity for McCollum, I say you take it. He would it. fit here. He, it's Portland, they, yeah, but well, and not even just Kevin Love. If it's another any other, just any that other comes CJ up. situation. I think if it comes up, I think it's something you have to take because, like I said, you're not going to get a big name free agent, in my opinion. Yeah. Unless, well, and it's kind of like James Harden, kind of like James Harden situation. It's if if McCollum's going to go, you don't you want to get something for him. You don't want McCollum to just leave and get nothing for him. Yeah. It'd yeah. be it's more I mean, beneficial exactly. to your team to Although trade. Although the Thunder he, did essentially get nothing who, for him. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm going to throw it out there too. And with also trading McCollum and getting Kevin Love, I'm not going to say straight up one person they should also uh, try to get from Cleveland. Jared Cunningham. Jared Cunningham. <laughs> Jared Cunningham. Yeah, that's awesome. what you're Kisses guy. the sky. Yeah. 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 That would Mike be Lee. awesome. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I got a Jared Cunningham signed rookie card. There it is. Ooh, nice. The Ma- a Mavs card? Yeah. Nice. I, I did. Nice. Got, it in, got it in Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, so I, uh, I bring I bring I bring Cunningham back into the That'd West cool. Coast here, but you yeah. know he Cunningham, gets time. Man, Cunningham, man, hey, he's fitting in well over there with the he Cleveland uh, homies over there. He's you know yeah. they're, they're posting <laughs> up at the club with LeBron and Tristan Thompson, J.R. Smith, yep. Iman Shumpert, Shot Man, Shot Man, Shot Man, Shot Man, Shot Man. I'll one up you. Bring back Eric Moreland and Jared Cunningham. Hey, oh, there you go. <laughs> Make a three way swap with the Kings just for Eric Moreland. <laughs> yeah, that'd be yeah. awesome. That'd be pretty funny. And then draft <laughs> Gary Payton. There it is. Hey, hey Neil O'Shea. Hey, he was scouting. Yeah, he was. So he was there. He was scouting. He was, he was there. He was there during the Cal he game. He didn't even stay for the whole game. I looked down and he left. Yeah, he like A couple <laughs> minutes left. He must. He must have just saw. I was like, he all saw right. what he needed to see. He saw what he needed to see from that. So days, staying man. on a staying on the, a little bit of the Blazers discussion, I just want to ask uh, Brian and Grant one more thing. Opinions and visions for Myers Leonard's future. Oh, I know Brian yeah. has got. Slang the mic to Brian. I know I got, Brian's got uh, some actually, wait, to say. wait, wait. I got a, more of a question for Jake, though. Oh, man. If you're talking about the future of Myers Leonard, what's the future of Myers Leonard on your header and your Twitter? <laughs> Ooh. It'll stay for quite some time okay. in, unless he gets traded. Okay. <laughs> I feel you there. <laughs> um, I would like to see him honestly stay in Portland because how young he is, but not as a starter. I say he's more of like... He's a center, but he plays more of the stretch four position. Yeah, and I say you make him a stretch four. You bring him off the bench, and you know, bring have him give you about fifteen minutes a game. Kind of. I feel like he gets so much hate because people forget how long it takes to develop seven footers in the NBA. I'm there he with isn't. You. He I isn't a Porzingis. That. Porzingis is a one in a million all star situation. No, I understand. Completely that. different games too, but he also is kind of soft. Very soft, <laughs> which is something. How long, as Portland fans, can we put up? Like we've been right. saying, we've been having to put That's up with I'm them not for so give long. Give up on them. I want to. I don't want to give up on them no. either. But I say, if you're bringing them back, you're not. Don't pay him a lot. I feel like he he yeah. he rejected the re, he rejected he our deal. Did. He's testing the waters. I really don't think he would find a satisfactory contract from someone else in the either. NBA. I think he should stay. He'll probably have to settle for way less money than he wants. But I'm all right with that. What are you going to do? I mean, he's got a yeah. nice situation here to build. I mean, Stotts has developed. Has confidence well, in you him. Need to, you need to save money for this. Up- Honestly, I know it's a stretch. I don't know if it'll happen, but Damian Lillard and Harrison Barnes are friends off the court. 
And Harrison Barnes yeah, is a restricted free agent this year. And Golden State is going to be put in a position pretty soon to have to pay some guys some money. Steph Curry is like their fifth highest and player. And I really don't know. How, how much do you even realistically see them being able to offer Harrison Barnes? Not much. Why? They got a lot coming in the uh, cap. TV yeah, TV oh, deal. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, they have a huge Forget about cash that. space coming up. And well, which talking, benefit, benefits us KD. and everyone. Exactly. They're that would be KD, interesting. We can possibly. talk that in a sec. But KD, I don't know. He's, I mean, they'd have to get rid of a couple of people. And but. I just, KD kind of has like, uh, what is that about him? I don't know necessarily the word about him, but Portland passed on him. I, I could chip he, on his shoulder like he exactly. would. Exactly. Yeah, he would never him. come here anyway. Could, but. Yeah. No, I, no, I was saying for Warriors. That's oh, no, he Warriors? was talking about KD to, yeah. Yeah, to yeah, okay. Golden State. Yeah. But if you uh, ah, man, they have so much like money that, they that have to give up. They just have Draymond Green sign a max contract deal. Yeah. Clay Thompson, I don't know even sure, has been paid what he's supposed to be getting paid yet. Steph Curry's like their fifth highest paid player on their team. Like he's yeah. not even up mm-hmm. there. Like they're he's gonna a, owe some money. He's about to get a lot of money. Exactly. So I say you put Golden State in a tough position and if Damien's as good as friends as they say is off the court with Harrison Barnes. I wouldn't not that would mind be a very interesting him, deal to have. Uh. having him coming to Portland. Back to uh, Myers, I'm kind of the same way. I mean, I like I like Myers. I I think he's developing. <laughs> I mean, especially from developing. Yeah, we've been yeah, saying I mean, that. I I don't know. I think at the right price, I think he's a solid role player coming off the bench type. Mm-hmm. He's not a starter. I don't think he's ever going to be like that. And I don't think, I don't even remember what the contract was that he turned down. It was, it was, it, was, it wasn't it wasn't much. It, like, it, was, it was like a three, four year, like 40 something mil. It was like for him. Yeah. You didn't hear that. He 40 turned mil. Yeah, it was, it was, it was in he the forties. Oh my God. He turned and down he turned money down. to try to See, test the water. That's what I don't want to do. I mean, if you can bring him back, I was, I was right surprised price. that we offered him that. So well, it's yeah, like, I'm it helps us how that he turned that down. You turn it down. Now we're probably going to be able to get away with giving him less than that. Yeah. yeah I'm he's he's going to kick himself. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That, so that's, he was thing. about to get paid. I do yeah. not, do not want to him to accept something like that. That would have been horrible. Uh, I think at the right price. Sure. But he's not like a crucial part of our future. You sound real confident in that. <laughs> I mean, how confident I, can we be? It's Myers. Yeah, it's, and, and it's Portland. <laughs> yeah. How many times have we seen potential just go out the window? Like, it just not happen. More times that you can count like on your Jordan. hands and feet. Oh, or in the, not even just Jake, the players. Up, just Jeff. not even the plays we didn't even get. Just <laughs> wait, the plays we did get. Like, wait, what? what's that sound? What's that sound? Play something. Play it. Play something. What Anything. do you want me to click? Anything. Click it. What's that sound? <laughs> That's the Michael Minute. Michael, oh, you are on the clock. Mike. <laughs> <laughs> this is a new segment we got here. We got intern Mike. He gets one minute on the clock. Mike, <laughs> anything you want to say, go. Uh, I don't have too much to say right now, I guess. Uh, wasn't really expecting this. <laughs> I just told you earlier in the show, this is what's going to happen. Came out of nowhere, but no, it's cool. Um, Minute it's ticking. Minute's ticking. <laughs> I guess we'll talk about Logan. So I should talk about this is our fantasy basketball matchup that we have this week. Yeah. Got my boy Rondo just dropped a triple double last night. Mm-hmm. I think it was like fifth of the season or something. Yeah, I didn't even know he got one until you texted me this He's morning. He's balling out this year, so that's nice. But Logan. I, I heard some gossip from Logan's roommate mm-hmm. that Logan said he didn't want me to make the playoffs yeah. or win the championship in fantasy basketball this year. No, that's true. Now, I did take it last year, but I've always kind of been like a... I haven't been like a terrible fantasy player, but yeah. I haven't been like someone that's you know been utter like dominating people, and I'm, I'm just like an average team this seconds. year. I'm just an average team this year. <laughs> So I was a little taken back when Logan said that. Cause, I mean, I see Logan as like a good friend, but I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know anymore. Maybe our friendship's breaking over fantasy Three, basketball. Three, two, one. There it is. All right, there's the Michael Pelson minute. That ended on a very <laughs> ominous note, too. <laughs> can, I, can I ask something? Who, yeah. who is who's everybody loves Draymond? I'm in that league. That's my roommate. That's his roommate. He's an absolute I fiend. spanked him last week. Yeah, you did. You 13 did. to 1. You yeah. did. His first loss of the season. I hope you like that. Georgie, listen. You like that. You like that? You like that? <laughs> All right. 
We yeah. need that soundbite too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, shout out do. Kirk. Yeah, shout out shout out to the the, the Mook Minute. Minute. Shout out the Mook Minute. I was I enjoy the Mook that Minute. That was good. Alright, we gotta do it again. Yeah, we gotta do it again sometime. <laughs> uh Jake, we also have another segment coming on. Uh, I think I don't know if you saw a tweet coming in there too. I I think you know who you're gonna roast. I think we had a suggestion also from our intern man. Mike's has been putting a huge yeah, show for this what game. Tweet yeah, Mike, came in. Mike, sh- Mike showed up big today. And it's uh, a Josh Smith. Yeah. Oh man! Oh, wow, Jake, you ready the the Jake Josh Grand segment? So we got a rare interview with the. Uh... <laughs> Who's on air right now? Josh Smith. Hey, Josh Smith. How you doing? <laughs> so, Jake, you want to go off on a... So I've been a Josh Smith hater ever since Detroit. <laughs> I think his game is lazy. I think when he's on the court, he looks like he doesn't care. Yeah. He also looks like he just got done eating, so he's sluggish. <laughs> he probably... He just waiting to get back to the hotel bathroom. But anyway, Josh Smith yeah. did just get traded back to Houston. Want to know why? Why? Because I'm trash. Ooh. Oh, there is actual trash in here. No, last time there was not. I mean, it is a trash can, but jo- yeah. Josh is filled up, man. Anyways, that is my trash segment there of the is. week. Josh Smith. Josh Smith. Trash segment of the week. Quick little flame sesh. Yep. Flame sesh. <laughs> Intern Mike is YouTubing Josh Smith highlights. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, that, yeah, that's, that's another segment we haven't been able to like, put on here the past week or so. But that, 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 Last interview with Greg Hardy, though. Yeah, and Greg Hardy was on Josh there. Josh Smith. And I think Josh, uh, James Harden, Josh, or, or. Oh, James Harden is definitely Harden, a featured trash can James guest Harden, of the week. Hardy, mm. and now Josh Smith. We got three J's. Three you J's. Just really I, don't like you just left, don't like J's. Left, left-handed players. And, for I, the and I did a trash segment on Johnny Manziel, too. Oh, dude, I'll, I'll agree with you on that. I'm sorry <sighs> for Johnny yeah. Manziel. Yeah. yeah. Mike just pulled up the video oh, of Jay, Josh Johnny. Smith eating breakfast. What is with the J's? <laughs> yeah. Jake, Jake, Johnny. I hate Jake, fellow Johnny, J's. James, 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 James. Fellow J's. Yeah. yeah. Jeff got spared because of the spelling, so I like you, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good, good to know. I will, I, will go, I will go right back at you if you try putting me on that trash segment. Oh, oh <laughs> I see a challenge. Oh. Does Jeff want to get, you want to get on the trash segment? Do you got a trash someone to go. shout out tonight? Right. I don't know. I don't really have anyone to like trash on, like trash right, right, right now. I mean, I don't know. Like, who do you want me to trash here? I don't know. You said you. The you, camera's on you, Jeff. The camera's I on said, you. I said if Jake called me out oh. and put oh. me on Jake it, then I'd out. like go back at but him. But now that you're on the spot, any uh, sports character in mind? or Johnny Manziel really like, God, he bugged me. I mean, I know this is like, a, is- I know that story's like a couple weeks old, but. Man, he just bugged me. Yeah, I there it is. I mean, I'm trash. Dude, well, dude, he goes to Vegas, wears a fake wig. Like, <laughs> it's like, I mean, if he's really just trying to get out of Cleveland, he's going through. He's going all. all he's Hollywood. Stops. He's going I mean, all out. I would love to see him on the Rams. That'd be kind of funny. Put him in <sighs> L.A. Um, nah, Sean, Sean doesn't need that. Sean doesn't need that distraction. It's bad influence on it's Sean. Bad, bad influence on Sean. I did. Yeah. 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 Anyway, Johnny Menzel, you are. Trash. There it is. There. I said it. There. there it is. Weekly trash segment. Weekly trash. We got two trash roasts. <laughs> putting putting people on the spot, man. That's uh kind of a hard thing. Just go, oh, yeah. Just yeah, well done. Well done. Rant. Yeah. There it is. Man, that was good. Yeah. Good little trash segment of the night. Yeah. Or the day. Mm, is that all we got going on for NBA? Uh of course, big games coming up. Oh, we got to have one more thing. Hey, hold on. All right, I guess we do got the Kobe thing. <laughs> Spit the Kobe <laughs> no, game. Go you for got, it. No, you got. You know, you got your Kobe thing. You got exactly two minutes to talk about <laughs> Kobe. 81. Okay, God, that's plenty of time. There it is. Uh, yeah, ten years ago today, Kobe yep. Bryant dropped eighty-one for all you Laker fans out there. KB eighty-one trending on Twitter. I don't know how many people are Laker fans out there. Kobe was a lot. Ford, I meant like listening, but uh, no. Than like none. Forty six, <laughs> yeah, forty six shots. Get this, the best stat: two count it, two assists. Uh, couldn't tell you to who. I know the Lakers were one for eleven in the six minutes that Kobe did not play uh, in the game. He was seven to thirteen from the, from the three point line. Just rattling off Kobe Bryant eighty one point stats here. Something you'll never see again. Shout out to Kobe, favorite player of all time. Uh, man, that was a cool night. I just gotta say it. There it is. All right, we got uh, sports aside here. We have a little Oregon State uh, references here. We we mentioned we were going to do a power rankings of top three. Oh, top, yes. Top three damn jam. They came out with some of the lists, the, the premium pre-list here. 
Uh, who's in your, well, your... Well, let's just list off the five real quick. Okay, there uh, you go. Just so we you know who we're picking from. Uh, it looks like it's either going to be Ray Schremer, Logic, T-Pain, Lupe Fiasco, or Andy Grammer. Andy Grammer should have been my trash can. <laughs> oh, <laughs> true. He's a generic pop singer. He's terrible. Yeah, I mean, the only one you would know is fine by me. It, it would just be another Posner type. Uh, gross. Yeah. Oh, it'd be even worse than that. I think it'd be, be worse it'd than be worse, But I'm saying, like, you know. Logan's I, a big Posner guy. I like guy. Mike Posner. Hoodie I had Allen. a good time with the Mike Posner I know, concert. I, too. I, I like Mike kind of Posner. Bit. I had a good time. Yeah. yeah I know your story. Uh, all right. What's, what's, <laughs> a, what's, a power, what's a power three? What's your power three? My power three. <laughs> From number, go to three to one. All right. Um, my number three uh, is T Pain. Yeah. Okay. I. I would be completely fine with the T Pain concert. Like there, that's why I had a lot of fun at Bob last year. Is because like you forgot a lot about like those you know kind of just key old jams. bangers, and then they would come on. And it was like, oh, I remember this. Like starting to remember the lyrics. You yeah. know, I, I I'll I'll take T Pain at three, but that's not like a knock on T Pain. I would love a T Pain concert. That'd be okay. fun. Uh, two, going Logic. Uh, I actually voted Logic. Um, you reconsidered now, and I reconsidered after kind of just thinking about it. I listen. I was listening to Ray Shremmerd the other day, and okay. that, that's why. So, kind of, kind of revealing my one at Ray Shremmerd. I think that would just be a lot of fun. Okay. I don't know. I mean, like, if you know Ray Shremmerd's music, that would be a. Uh, it's just crazy it's, party I mean, music, crazy which is perfect party, for that like, concert. Yeah. It would yeah. just be really cool. All right. What you guys got here, Jeff, uh, Brian? I, I, I don't know. I think I'd go Ray. I mean, Ray Shremmerd. Three, three to one. Um, I go Logic three. Uh, Ray Shremmerd two, Lupe Fiasco one. Okay. I think Lupe would oh. be a cool concert. Ryan, what do you got? Okay. Um, I got T Pain three. Um, probably Logic two and Lupe one. There it is, Jake. Who you got? I was the exact same as Grant. Logic two, Ray Shremmerd one, T Pain three. Mike, who you got? <laughs> he has to make his. Way I over. got Shremmer three because it'd be a fun concert. Yeah. Just because, you know, they're all bangers. Yeah. yeah. Logic at two because he has some bangers, but he's also just, like, super talented. Yeah. And then I got Lupe at one because Lupe is one of, one of my favorite artists of all time. And I missed his concert last week. I wanted to go. Yeah. And I heard it was really good, yeah. so I'm sure it'd be great, too. Yeah. Mine would go three, T-Pain, just because I'd love some, you know. Yeah. Auto-tune. Yeah, I get it. Good yeah. old auto-tune in there. Uh, you can actually sing, though, this so is, he'd be yeah. singing. Yeah. This is this, and then the uh, tough one for me. If Lupe played his old songs, "Daydream," oh, oh yeah, yeah. I'll give you that. Uh, but if I, I would put Lupe at two, yeah, but only if he played new stuff. And I don't I think probably he wouldn't. He if, would. I think he would just do his new album. Though. That's so, yeah, the thing. That'd be tough. So if he play yeah. old stuff, I'd be totally cool with Lupe at one. But I'm gonna put Lupe at two, and then I go Logic at one. See, that's the thing. Logic, most talented oh, by, by far, far out of talented. any. Then like, there, he's my. Top two favorite artists with J. Cole, but like, I just think Ray Schremmerd would be a fun college concert. There it is. Oh, no doubt. I, but I mean, with all these guys, you can't go wrong. Yeah. Except Andy Grammer. Except Andy yeah, Grammer. Except Andy Grammer. <laughs> Grammer. I think Andy Grammer, Andy Grammer my trash can for the week. He ain't getting no <laughs> votes he's, online. He's, we got top four, and then he's just at Watch like him win. Like, just watch him win. <laughs> <laughs> Hope not. Hope not. All right. All right. But oh, yeah. Before we. Uh, Wrap up the show today. Is there any uh, last second thoughts you guys have? Anything uh, you want to mention? Uh, the guy who's been commenting on oh, uh, yeah. the, the form. <laughs> I get off the post. Roasted. Butte. Uh, we'll just say Boom. his Boom. last. Roasted. Butte. He j- he literally just posted in the chat. Roast me. So yeah, you're roasted. Boom. Roast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's all I got to say. That's all you got to say. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, me and Logan will be there tomorrow night. Oh, but yep. uh, for anyone who's out there still listening. Alex Crawford, he uh, is down in Corvallis, too. It's not a premiere. He's showed it all over uh, the Portland area, but he will be showing his Legend of the Giant Killers documentary on the legendary 1967 1967 OSU versus USC matchup. Yep. He is a former NMC major here student. He actually did a radio show that I was on four years ago. He did the TV show, too, so it will be 7 p.m. at the Whiteside Theater for $10 entrance, I believe. Yep. $10. So, uh, It'll be a cool event, and there, I think I believe he's going to be doing a question and answer with a p- former player and the fellow directors. Yeah, post movie, so yep, come and check that out. That'll be awesome. Yep. All right, we all right, right wrapping it up. We got through a lot today. Uh, shout out to our our guests. You got one last thing you want to say, uh, Jeff and Brian? Uh, 
Thanks for having us on. Yeah, we had to do our little observation here. For, so we, uh, can we uh, be expecting the Jeff and Brian show coming up? Oh, uh? uh, yeah. It'll, it'll, hopefully soon. Yeah, it'll Any, be, uh, it'll be it'll coming names up soon. being thrown uh, out? We, only got, we haven't really talked about a name or anything. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll figure it out. We only got our air check left, and then... Uh, I feel it, so yeah, uh, we're look close. out for those guys. So look out. Yeah, yeah, thanks making for waves. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Of course. Yeah, anytime, anytime. anytime. Thanks for listening. Have a great weekend. Beavs on Saturday, or Beavs on Sunday, and NFL Championship on Go Sunday as well. Let's Go, Go Beavs. Second Go String Beavs. Sports. Thanks for listening. Every Friday is 12 to 2. Uh, it just didn't feel like we were ever going to win it. Yeah, I, I just had no confidence, uh, you know, halfway through, and usually I, mean, I do. It's, it's never a good sign when you start the game off, and within you know a minute and a half, you got three fouls. <laughs> yeah, you know? and it, it just—I mean, it, I don't know. It was weird just watching that game. I never really thought Oregon State was going to make a run and take a lead and really take over that game. I don't know what it was, but I, I think like I mean, especially towards the end of the game, the ball just kind of. They on offense it stopped moving. They they kind of started forcing threes and taking really mm-hmm. bad shots. And that's kind of something that's something you've been seeing at least later in games sometimes where they just they don't really run an offensive set. They kind of go all right, yeah. Gary Langston, you know Malcolm, get to the lane, try and like kick out for a three, and it doesn't always work. Yeah, yeah, like you were saying too, the early fouls GP two picked up too quick. Yeah. Well, one of them yeah, was dumb, was... just slapping down on the ball that yeah, he should have just left alone. I, and Gary, yeah, he was out for, he, I, mean, I think, maybe he sat out for a long time. Out most yeah. of the first half. Maybe yeah, like this fifth, five minutes ago. Uh, yeah, I want to say like probably six minutes, maybe like five, six minutes left in the first half. He came back in. Yeah. So he was yeah, out yeah. for a while. I, yeah. And he needed to, and too. I, I mean, our offense looked horrible. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we had seven points with like with 11 minutes to go in the first yeah. half. Yeah, and Gomes got in foul trouble too pretty yeah, early. Gomes and he got his first start of the year, and he's trying to, you know, get him back. That was his second start. Second start of the year. Sorry about that. And he was trying to get it back into rhythm, you know. It's been it's trying to get back in that starting role. I'm not yeah. sure he'll keep it, but you know, bring that senior like seniority into the game, experience, and he wasn't even able to get into a role because they he got in foul trouble real early as well. Yeah, and uh, that that was tough because then and, you know, then Drew came in, and then uh, and then after that, uh, NJ, and, but NJ's been putting in some good minutes as well. And I, I, yeah, I've credit been, to NJ. He's been yeah working his they, butt been a off, couple, especially yeah. from freshman year. Yeah, and there's been a couple times where, it's, but overall though, from NJ, I've been I've been impressed this year from whenever Drew's in foul trouble or now that Gomez is back and now without Jamal. But I I think NJ's been playing really well, so I gotta give credit there to NJ. But. Uh, Jake, uh, we ready to queue up this tinkle sound bite. Yeah, got we got actually we got here. we got a double tinkle sound bite. We got son and father. Yeah, two time tinkle sound Tris, bite. Nice. I am your father. <laughs> wow, that was disgusting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, cue this up. Boom. Uh, tough game. Credit UCLA, boy, they hit a lot of shots and uh, made some big baskets. We're really uh, the aggressor tonight. Um, proud, proud of some fight that we showed, you know. But um, gosh, we just every time we made a little run, we shot ourselves in the foot or, or gave up a little bit of a run. Um, you know, I thought maybe we had some some guys that maybe waited a little bit too late to get going, and and uh, you know somehow I, I obviously didn't do a terrific job of getting our guys. Uh, prepared mentally uh, for tonight. So um, I thought we had a good practice yesterday. Thought we had good preparation, but uh, we weren't we weren't ready to come out of the gate tonight. And so that that falls on me. And so we'll uh, we'll have to correct that moving forward. Um, I felt the same. Really, you know, uh, all I really want to do is win. So I don't really, you know, whatever my role is. But being out there, um, kind of got the nerves out early and things like that. But you know, I wasn't too, you know, nervous going into it. And we're back. That was a little uh, father son, as Logan said. Yeah, tinkly tinkle. Yeah. Uh, what? I don't know, he's trying to say like mono e mono, no, but I, it's I, a, I know I got it, uh, but yeah. it just came yeah. off yeah. really yeah. hard. Shut up, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> oh wow! Did, for for anyone noticing on camera, Jeff just took off the LA Kings jersey Only to, to, go to, to a Dodger shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Represent Yasiel Puig. Classic <laughs> LA Jeff. That's right. <laughs> Yasiel's probably gonna you know. He'll probably be gone soon. He'll probably be but, gone pretty soon you know, the Dodgers. But. I, I got to remember the memories while I can. <laughs> I wouldn't say they're great memories. 
His first season is <laughs> well, pretty. I mean, his first know. season was pretty cool, and then his second season was cool, and then this year he just kind of got hurt. And <laughs> did a bunch of stupid stuff. Um, all right, so yeah, we'll just we'll just recap. Teagle just kind of talked about there the the hard effort that the team played, and uh, Trace talking about his first start. And uh, going forward uh, here against the game of it against USC this weekend, this weekend Sunday, Sunday afternoon. Mm-hmm. And if you remember last year, also game against USC was also in the afternoon, and that was also a, almost a sellout crowd. Yeah. Uh, Here's the issue with this one: NFL playoffs. Sunday. Yep. <laughs> Championship yep. Sunday. Yep. Sorry wow. to the Beavs, but I'm not going to be there because uh, Patriots Broncos kicks off at 12, uh, and I think this tips off at. Noon also. Yeah. Tough and noon. Uh oh. Sorry, but football is more entertaining. <laughs> uh, I'm. I'll, I'll be. I'll be at the beeves. Uh, Look at you but, being you dedicated. Know, if, I'll if, be at the beeves too. If, the if, beefs, if, it was in, if it was the Chiefs in that situation, uh, I probably would. I would probably be watching the Chiefs. Yeah, so. you, you, you could. You could watch the Chiefs. You know, screw up time management and watch yep. Andy Reid. Just classic <laughs> Andy Reid. <laughs> <Dang. Alex> <laughs> That's why we let Peterson go to the Eagles. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, send, send them back. Yeah, the Eagles, like, Eagles basically hire Andy Reid 2.0. Which is just so, they literally which did. Is so bizarre. I mean, it, that's it is, such a it, Philadelphia thing yeah, to right? do. You, know, you, you hire you hire Chip, and then go. Oh, okay. Well, we'll go back to Andy Reid. <laughs> right, hey, whatever. We'll, we'll dive whatever into yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll get into that when we talk about football. But USC game. Uh, McLaughlin for USC. Uh, Paul, he's up there with one of the, maybe Pac-12 Player of the Year's up there. With, you know, Gary and Andrew mm, Andrews. Yeah. And, um, but USC, they they did lose to Oregon last night, uh, which yep. is it's just another example of teams beating up on each other on the Pac-12. What do you guys got a prediction for the game against USC? I think we'll be ready. Uh, I think Tinkle probably went in after the UCLA game and probably mm. ripped them a new hard. One. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I mean, I don't know. wasn't It wasn't there. But it's safe to Tinkle, say yes, he did. After the whole Jarmal thing, and then that the way they played and responded to, to that. Safe to say, he's not putting up with anything anymore. Yeah, anything. Um, obviously, going to be a tough game. They're playing well. They're obviously really confident. Um, mm-hmm. I think I think Beavs win in a close one. Uh, hopefully, we get a good crowd. I, I think, think the crowd will still huge. be a good crowd. So I think mm-hmm. that's gonna it's be USC. Huge, USC major always key. draws. True. I think that's going to be a major key. Uh, Major key. Yeah, you totally need a soundbite for that. <laughs> just feed off the crowd energy. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they went, a, went in a close one. I think they bounced back. I, it's kind of weird because they, they seem to be kind of just going back and forth between, you know, offense is free-flowing and looking like one of Pac-12's best yeah. and then just completely going stagnant. Uh, I don't know. I think this is one of the <laughs> one of the good, the good times. I think they went in a close one. Yeah, I think I, I got the Beavs in this one, too. Uh, but I think it's going to be a close game as well. But I, I got the Beavs. I, I agree. I'm with you guys. I think the Beavers beat SC. I mean, my dad went to SC, so I want the Beavers to win. We've kind of been talking a little junk back and forth. But yeah. I do think the Beavers win this. It's a close one. Beavers at home, I don't think they play as bad as they did against UCLA. I think they come out come out fired up. I'm not going to say a double-digit win, but it'll be, it'll be close. It'll be a win. It'll be a win, definitely. Yeah, it should be. When Cal made a trip up here earlier this year, they lost to Oregon a couple nights before playing Oregon State, and then they came to Oregon State, lost that. And game. look how we, yeah, really hope look how we performed in that game. situation, yeah. which I think it could be after that UCLA performance. They, well, I yeah. think they'll have fire Jake, lit up underneath them. I'm going Beavs too. There I agree. It is. Straight Beavs across the table. Unanimous Sweet. Go Beavs. High rolling Beavs. Go yeah. Beavs. It's that Go Beavs lifestyle. It is. I mean, yeah. You can't root against them. Lifestyle. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, sorry. Yeah, can you finish it? <laughs> Young Jake, can you rap siren? for us? Rap siren? No. Not. Come on, rap siren. Four rap bar siren. Friday, Jake. Come I don't on. think we have the rap siren. Come anymore. on, Jake. Yeah, Four don't. bar Friday. Yeah. Damien would do it. <laughs> Come on, Money Stacks. Once we talk NBA, maybe. Get something queued up. Oh. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Get some instrumentals in here. Let's do it, Jake. I mean, we could do a whole second string cipher. <laughs> <laughs> NBA, all, nothing but raps. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so before we do move on from basketball, just quick shout out to women's basketball though beating Stanford. For anyone who's out there at that game, mm-hmm. first time that they've beaten Stanford since two thousand one. Two thousand one, so. and it's quite a while. And <laughs> for women's basketball, <laughs> just a bit. And for women's basketball, Stanford is a powerhouse. They're like the U, like they're the UConn. They are of the, West the Coast. Alabama of. They're the Alabama football of the con. Yeah. Well, no, UConn would really be that. 
UConn would be the Alabama of women's basketball. I wouldn't really. They're mean. like the LSU. No, they're not no, LSU. They're like, well, because U- UConn, yeah, UConn's the Alabama. Yeah, they UConn's are. the Alabama. Like, Stanford's like, I don't know. LSU's like a solid comparison, but LSU's only won one national title. So, I I don't know. I mean, it's kind of hard, kind of hard to pick a college college yeah. basketball team, I, or college football team. Ohio State. Yeah, Ohio, Ohio there State. State. Ohio State. Ohio State. Hey, shout, out, shout, out, shout, shout out to Mike. Michael Palliston here in the corner. Yeah. He, he gave us a little OSU compa- or Ohio State comparison there. He's our cameraman. He's our intern. <laughs> shout out to Mike. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's a good comparison. Thanks, Mike. That was really that was really key. That's a big key there. Major key. Major Mike. key. For Mike, Mike. Major key. Mike. Mike as a whole key. is just a major key. Yeah. <laughs> as a person. Uh, thanks for the comparison. But yeah, Stanford. Uh, it was a good game for the Be- Lady Beeves. And um, if you guys missed it last night, Jake and I had the Beaver Sports Show. We had a little sit down with uh, a little women's basketball insider. So you guys can, if you mm-hmm. want to tune in that, look at KBVR 26 YouTube page. That should be on here pretty soon. So Exactly. All right. That's enough of basketball. So make sure to get out to USC on Sunday noon. Right, noon? Noon, yep. noon in noon. Gill Coliseum. We're going to take a quick PSA break. But when we come back, stay tuned. We're going to get into this NFL season. Championship games coming up. Second string sports. Stay tuned. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, I learned that I'm ugly and useless. And in gym, I learned that I'm pathetic and a joke. In history, I learned that I'm trapped. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In In English, I learned that I make people sick. And And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn... Is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at StopBullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. This is Usher. I've spent years mentoring youth and have seen how volunteering and service teaches young people the skills they need to become leaders and sets them on the path for success. This is about you. It's about your power. It's about creating change on your terms by volunteering. The truth is you can do anything. Join me in answering the president's call to service. Go to serve.gov today. This message is brought to you by United We Serve and the Corporation for National and Community Service. The Benton Soil and Water... Are your kids on the computer all day? (laughs) Pulling the power cord can get them onto the playground. Creative moms can keep kids active and healthy. Get ideas at letsmove.gov. Brought to you by the USDA, HHS, and the Ad Council. Make good nutrition and physical activity part of your family's daily lifestyle. Be our guest to healthy living and visit letsmove.gov to learn more. Brought to you by Let's Move, the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ad Council. It's second stream, but we all never sit the bitch. Rising stars of the radio, now watch as we ascend. Second stream telling the truth, there's no need to take offense. Grand Jake Logan in the booth, so you better pay attention. And we're back, Second String Sports. Before we get into it, we just want to remind you, if you're watching on the live stream or listening live on 88.7 FM, you can hashtag Second String Sports, post on our Facebook page, or tweet us. That's a, we could do a quick little round of Twitter handles if they don't know because of the guests. At McGrady 7 Slide into my DMs, at LT McGinnis. <laughs> and at Grano Campo. Uh, hey, let's give some shout-outs over at, here. At GLO Show 6 I know Brian's hey. got one. Brian, Brian, are you on Twitter? At uh, B Reese. Hey, <laughs> oh, B. Reese. <laughs> I got one. I'm very rarely on it, though. <laughs> That's such a casual. Yeah. <laughs> At B Reese. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you do uh, have any disagreements or agreements with what we've talked about so far, uh, well, that was a weird far. Mm. Jarmal incident, OSU basketball, you can hashtag second string sports and tweet at us. Moving on, though, we're going to get into a little professional sports NFL playoffs. Recap what happened last weekend, and then let's get into the championship games this weekend. What do you guys think? Uh, last weekend, I cried uh, the whole weekend. and Yeah, you were uh, 
for those who didn't know, Logan is a little silent ball of uh, yeah, just was, sadness and despair. Uh, well, ultimately, <laughs> thought it, I'd have to call a hotline or something. It, it was it was in my lifetime that I can remember. I've never seen a Kansas City Chiefs playoff victory. You got that the week before. I got that so you're, before you're happy. You're built up. Oh, wait, hold up. Didn't didn't the Chiefs beat Peyton Manning in 2003? Because I remember watching that. And not in the playoffs. No, that was in the playoffs. I thought. No. Nope. Or was that to get into the playoffs? Mm, no, we we got into the playoffs, but uh, lost. That's what it was. Yeah, we lost. The, yeah, we lost. Well, sorry for rubbing that in. And then we also played the Colts. Jeff knew. He just years. wanted to no. get that in. <laughs> Jeff totally knew. Yeah, and we yeah, I remember we sneak we snuck in that year too. Then there was the Andrew Luck year where he. Ooh, oh you know, man, remember I, that game? I remember watching uh, that on a plane. So that, I I remember that <laughs> what was the heck. Your, <laughs> yeah. And then Uncle Tom comes in and just <laughs> last week. Man, it was tough, but there was a lot. There was a lot of there was a lot of miscues in the Chiefs part. Uh, there was a Nile Davis fumble. Yeah. Uh, that was Andy Reid's headphones allegedly. Uh, Andy Reid's clock just not working. Yeah, the clock the clock management. That was terrible. It was it was pretty was bad. Terrible. But really, it it wasn't te- like, overall in a sense it wasn't that bad. They still like when they got the ball when they got the touchdown, but them yeah. huddling up when there was like a minute fifteen, I was like, "Come on, just go!" And yeah. Well, I I can absolutely I can defend Andy Reid a little bit here with yeah. his whole strategy of kind of taking a little more, you know, taking time. For one, he runs the West Coast offense that's not really designed to go fast. They just don't like doing that. Yeah. And there and secondly, he does. I I don't blame him for not wanting to give the ball back to Brady. And I mean, basically, his whole thinking is: I got all three timeouts. I score. I force them to run the clock out. You know, burn my three timeouts. They haven't run on me all day. I at least get another shot. Yeah, get the ball with a minute or something. He just got unlucky with the Rob Gronkowski tip pass to yeah. Edelman, which yeah. is not Andy Reid's fault. Yeah, there, there. But overall, it was it was still it was an entertaining game to watch. But even more entertaining. All right, we'll move on because I don't. I'm kind of done with it. I'm already, I'm already <laughs> done with it. Uh, but no, Patriots move on. Boom, it's over. I shed a tear one more time. Uh, next game was probably one of the best football games. Green Bay. That's not a, a you know maybe like a Super Bowl Tyree you know catch. That there. was crazy. Yeah, that game was, that was awesome. Pack, that was great. Packers versus Cardinals. We talked about this on air last week with Jordan Villeman, and we were like, man, you cannot pick against Aaron Rodgers. It's tough. But then mm-hmm. we some of us went like it was like half split with uh, in the booth here, and it was tough for, for all of us to pick. And when if everybody missed it, if you didn't miss it, sucks to be you. But that Aaron Rodgers, Hail Mary. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was insane. Wow. Jeff, Jeff Janis. Yeah. What and, uh, right? Jeff Janis with two catches <laughs> this two, whole season. Yeah. And yeah. just goes off. Yeah. Uh, it's it's like, Janis time. But <laughs> Rodgers, like, he just, he just went side. Like, it was total sidearm, just, like, flicked. Boom. I think the the more impressive throw throw by Rogers is that fourth and twenty in his own end zone. Yeah. And he gets somehow like avoids the rush in his own end zone. That was like just a fadeaway like, drop back. Just yeah, kind of yeah. flicks his wrist and hits. I think it was, that was I think it was yeah. the other the other stereotypical that, white, white receiver. Yeah, but, that's a second Hail Mary. Just a this Rogers year. thing. Yeah. Second Hail Mary this year for Rogers. Yeah. That was crazy. Uh but I, after that I instantly thought of our interview with Jordan and yeah. Austin. I was like, man. You know, because I think I think Jordan I think Jordan picked the the Packers and that too, and I was like, wow, I, I think yeah. he's right. You just can't pick against Aaron Rodgers. He's, he's a god. That's it. Ex- yeah. well, I but, mean, except for the fact that he's lost in overtime the last two yeah. seasons and hasn't even gotten a chance to touch the ball. Right. But. Yeah. But yeah, and then we'll move on to that. We got uh, Flipgate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it's actually not a coin flip. It's a coin toss. So. <laughs> yeah. Coin I mean, fall. Yeah. <laughs> that was so funny. That's pretty funny. And oh yeah, there, was it Jake? Yeah, it was Jeff. <laughs> uh, and it was it was pretty funny when the, they had the camera just on the coin. Yeah, and I don't know who like who, like the director of NBC Senior, and he doesn't have you know the same sort of time that you would have to kind of just rehabilitate your image as you would yeah a freshman or sophomore. I mean, that was kind of the sad part is that you know he is twenty two, but he has been in the program for four years. So yeah. you know and. Uh, as a team standpoint, I, I when it first happened, I real I kind of thought like, well, Jamal was out for most of the year with the stress fracture in his foot, so I was mm-hmm. I was thinking I was like, yeah, even this happened, Jamal was playing well, uh, even with pa- like dishing some passes off, uh, and even scoring as well. And but now after this game the other day, I was I kind of 
thinking that we almost need Jarmol. It's almost a uh, we do. He adds a lot of depth. Yeah, so. energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jar- Jarmol brings toughness too. Yeah, yep. I-, I mean, kind of an undersized four. He's he's not afraid to go up against a lot of the bigger guys and yeah. rebound. I would say right now he's almost our most aggre- He's the most aggressive forward. Uh, that's yeah. not. But I I wouldn't say if you want to uh, put t- uh, Trace in there. Uh, but I would almost put him at like a small. I put it, I'm saying like power forward, like center. He's yeah, the most kinda, aggressive scoring. He uh, kind of plays like Draymond Green. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, he's obviously not as talented as Draymond, but yeah. you know that kind of undersized. Draymond just getting triple doubles left and right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't think we'll be seeing that anytime soon. But yeah. I mean, you no. Know, Jarmal can rebound and he he, he gets mm-hmm. those dirty points, you know, and plays tough. Got yeah. A good touch around the basket as well. Like that's one thing I've noticed in that UCLA. That's one thing I noticed in that UCLA game was that. They miss a lot of close shots, but he's got that touch inside that a lot of those where they bounce around the rim, they go in. Yeah. And mm-hmm. they were missing those against UCLA. And that's what makes me nervous about going forward is that they're already struggling and they need to get that momentum back. But this doesn't help putting a you know X on their back because even though refs aren't supposed to be personally biased towards teams, you can almost see it in a way. I mean, they opened the game against UCLA with three fouls right off the bat within the yeah. first 20 seconds. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't know. Hopefully they can get that momentum going that will help out. But yeah, he's a he's a huge hit to their team right now. Yeah. And speaking uh, of the losses, we we can get into that now. Yeah. And yeah, it's just been a is it like it's been a rough patch. It's been a rough patch and it's you can't really it, it's hard to explain the skid and what's really wrong. I don't even think Tinkle Tinkle can't even put a word on it. It's it's, it's really tough, but I think it's ultimately what I think it is. It it's just it's uh the ch- it's kind of just the change of roles from last year to this year. I think Malcolm's lost. I think Malcolm's a little bit lost in the offense right now. Uh, seeing that last year, he you know he just knew exactly what his role was. He was going to be the starting point guard and just playing the whole entire game practically. And we we've seen some lineup shakeups too. Langston's now uh, in this previous game here against UCLA Langston went to the bench and Trace came in and I think some of this lineup shake I ultimately I think it might help out going forward but right now I think it's just kind of in a transition period where some players are just kind of lost and also the youth uh, I think maybe might be taking a little bit of a toll and I think I kind of see that in Drew as well but you know uh I think going forward, I, I think it's I think it's this little rough patch might be good for us, but we definitely need to kind of get off this uh, little rough patch we're on. I, th- I think it, it'll be good going forward because you got you got the four freshmen who are playing meaningful minutes right now. Yep, and they're gonna kind of get the groove of playing impactful basketball, playing on the road. You know, I, I don't know. I. I we're probably not going to make the tournament this year. I know there was a lot of hopes. There was a, there was a there lot was a of there lot, was a lot of hype. A lot of hype that okay, this is the year the Beavers finally do it. I don't think I don't think they're going to do it, especially now at the Pac-12. It's yeah. looking like they're going to have seven to eight teams in there. Yeah. Uh, but going forward, you got four freshmen who play meaningful minutes, and you know Trace yeah. and Eubanks are the two who yeah. really stand out. And man, they're good. Yeah. Uh, and as you said, because the Pac-12 this year, it is, it is tough, and it's really flipped. And I'm, I'm actually, USC. I'm really surprised. It, it's, it's, it's honestly, it's just like Pac-12 football this year. Like, yeah. there's no like one team that stands out that you go, okay, like we got our Alabama, we got our, you yeah. Know, yeah. Kentucky or our Duke or whatever, who's gonna stand out and like that's your best team. But we have eight to ten teams that are really yeah. solid. And that's, there. and then I think it was, I don't know if it was RPI, uh, but I. Th- or just tough, uh, but I think it was us, Pac-12, and uh, the Big 12, yeah. I think, is like the two toughest conference in like RPI or something like that right now. The Big 12 is pretty pretty gnarly to go through, yeah, I yeah, gotta yeah, say. Yeah, you got Oklahoma, Kansas. Oklahoma uh, State beat Kansas this week. Iowa yeah. State, uh, Baylor's in, in the top 15. So they're almost kind of like us right now. West they're Virginia, just beating up on yeah. Everyone's just beating up on Everyone each other. Everyone in the Big 12 just beating up on everyone. Yeah, so it's kind of like what we have here in the Pac-12. Uh, but there's, we'll talk about some, you know, USC is a hot team right now. Washington's hot. hot. Andrew Andrews. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that later as well. But back 12 right now. It's crazy. Smoking. Smoking. Yeah. Yeah. Impossible to predict. Yeah. So, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough for us. Like, as Jeff said, it's going to be tough for us to get into the tournament this year automatically with some of these losses that we've had. But uh, I think, you know, Looking forward to the next couple of years is that's going to be the the big transition because that's when Tinkle's even going to have more of his players. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
So that's gonna be that's gonna be key a key to success. And and going back to they the, don't want us to succeed. They don't. <laughs> we need those sound bites ASAP. Yeah, we do. We need some DJ Khaled sound bites. <laughs> but going back to the freshmen real quick, I've been pretty impressed with how they've you know come out um, like pretty fearless on the road. Yeah. I mean Kansas, you remember that yeah, Trace, Trace five for five. Yeah, yeah. You know Utah, they opened up well. What they got to learn is to finish games, and that comes with experience. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, but it was kind of the same thing last year too. Mm-hmm. Where Oregon State, where we'd get off to kind of we'd have this good, we'd have this good first half. We'd be with a team that, like you know, we're not really supposed to be there with, and then right around the ten minute mark in the second half, like yeah. the superior uh, talent uh, kind of takes yeah. over. Switches flip. Yeah, exactly. Which is kind of which is weird, and you know, in the beginning of the year, you kind of saw that where yeah. they, it seemed like they were starting to learn how to close games a little better, and now they've kind of gone back to not not really being able to close those games out. Mm-hmm. And I think we can this year too. It's just, I think last year a lot of it was a lack of depth. Definitely. I mean, they just got tired by the end, especially yeah. running running around the zone. And Yeah, I, well, I mean, it was seven players last year. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I think we have the talent to finish games, but it, it comes with experience and it's, they just don't have it right now. Yeah, yeah, like what you were saying, Logan, some of the guys just seem lost too at times, like in their roles, which makes things, I don't know, they just are comes to where coming to finish games i don't know where like some players are trying to like you know a lot of times it's gary that you see trying to finish the game himself because no one else is stepping up yeah and i don't know you just don't see the guys really stepping up into their role making big impact plays like you hope they would yeah that was kind of the start of the year too i can't remember which game exactly it was it was one of the, it was one of the earlier games non-conference uh that gary took like 20 some yeah. shots and it, well, we I think we won yeah, that game as well. Kobe in that game, or no, hey, no, it was hey, the game. Hey, we, no, hey, I think hey. it was the game we lost. <laughs> and it was Valpo. It was Valpo. It was oh. a Valpo game. Yep, that's what it was. That's, yep, that's what it was. Um, and then because it, it, that's what happens though. Sometimes when we, when we just feel lost and we just and Gary just takes kind of you know twenty plus shots and that's what we, that's we can't have that. We need we definitely need the the balance of what you know Trey scoring fifteen, uh, Tinkle scoring you know twelve and Drew getting eight and Langston getting seven and you know just mm-hmm. a good balance. And that's I mean, you know that's. It's it just sometimes there it's not happening, so it's it's tough. Well, that's just not also Gary's game. Gary's not yeah. a prolific scorer. He's an all around really yeah. good player. Yeah, uh, he doesn't just specialize in scoring. He's an all around game game player. But when you have him taking twenty plus shots a game, that's kind of putting the offense out of rhythm. Yeah. What else we got for? Uh, we could talk about the more about the game here coming last up this night. weekend. Yeah. Or, or this last, game, yeah, this game true. last night. True, true. Uh, we also later here have a soundbite from Tinkle and Trace. Uh, but let's talk about the game last night against UCLA. What did you guys see from that? Uh, that was two nights ago, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was yeah, like, was two yeah, two nights yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. It's um, been a blur this week. Yesterday was a blur. It's a big yeah. blur. Same thing. Um, that, was, that was pretty rough from the very start. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I, it, it was hard to watch. There was no control the entire match. Yeah. On the beef side, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It wasn't like a Utah situation where we came out with energy. It just kind of felt like Fatigued the whole game. Almost. Yeah. I don't know. As the game was going through, I mean, we were talking about this before. Jeff was saying, you know, even when we got within three. Season. 
Good afternoon, Corvallis. You're listening to Second String Sports on 88.7 FM. Corvallis back with another episode. Second week, second show. Second term. Second Let's do term. It. 2016. We have some special guests in the booth before we start. We're going to let them... Uh, Give a little shout out before uh, we get started here. Yeah, so let's, uh, guys, let's introduce you guys to self here. Uh, well, what's up? My name's Jeff Lowe. Back again. Uh, is good to be thir- back. Is this like a third or maybe a third or fourth uh, time here, Jeff? I think it's third. Third? It's cre- I, creeping yeah, up yeah. on a featured guest uh, <laughs> yeah. on yeah. that list there. He's, yeah. a, he's, our, he's our LA insider. As uh, you can tell if you're watching, I got, yeah. my, uh, <laughs> got my Dodger hat and my Kings jersey on today. Yeah, so if you got any LA questions, you can tweet in the Jeff. You know, there's Kobe 81 day. We'll probably talk about oh, that. Oh, you know, we're already talking Kobe, about Kobe it. Kobe insider, tweet about I've that. Been, I've been watching SportsCenter all morning getting hyped up for this 81 point game yeah. that we're, <laughs> we're going to talk about. All right, uh, Brian, let's introduce yourself here. What's up? I'm Brian Reese. I'm a senior here at Oregon State. Um, friends with Jake, friends with Jeff. Uh, again, get into the radio business, hoping to. Yeah, there uh, we go. Looking forward to working with you guys. Oh, yeah. Sweet, exactly. So uh, before we get started here, just a quick rundown. You can follow us at Second String KBVR on Twitter or hashtag Second String Sports to tweet in any questions or disagreements. Anything. Wow, we are starting to show literally anything. You if you want to, if you want to start with a uh, little beef action, if you want beef with us, tweet at us. Yeah, fun fact, uh, if you we also want to see what we look like, if you heard the voices of... Uh, Jeff and Brian, and you like just sort of yeah. wondering what they look like. Yeah, like, you just hit, <laughs> I just have curiosity, uh, really. KBVR.com. You can uh, watch us yeah. on camera. Yeah, you know? go to the FM page. Boom, you're there. All right, so we're gonna kick it off here. OSU basketball. Yeah, let's just jump right into it. The most relevant topic. Yeah, and I think we should probably should just talk uh, or start talking. Yeah, about that's inevitable. What, literally, what almost the whole country oh, has kind of seen. Break the um, internet. Oh, you break the internet. Yeah, and not in a good way. Uh, <laughs> and Jarmal Reed. Let's, you know, let's kind of talk about that. Probably heard the name quite a bit over yeah, the past and, week. Yeah, and if anybody hasn't seen it, Jarmal Reed against the Utah game. Late in the game, uh, really close. And Jarmal, it, granted, uh, there may be, in my opinion, there wasn't a few calls here and there. Yeah. But Jarmal uh, tripped uh, Pac-12 ref Tommy Nunez. Uh, kind of. <laughs> if you if you don't if you haven't seen it, just maybe Google it. You'll probably find see, it. You'll probably Google see his vines. name and you'll find it. Yeah. I uh, and so he just kinda, he, he tripped him, fell. Tommy Nunez looked gets unintentional up. at first. Looked unintentional at first, but then you see the replay. Uh, saw the, saw yeah. Jarmol's eyes just lurking. Uh, yeah. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just had to click that. I'm, my finger was hovering on that. Yeah. So it. it it's an unfortunate situation, really. Uh, and, so, you know, some of us in here, we know Jarmal. Uh, and Jarmal's a good guy. He's hilarious. Yeah, he's he's saying, funny. Yeah. He, and uh, it, it's just it's just unfortunate that some of the public here has to, uh, if they don't know Jarmal and they don't uh, even know about the Oregon State basketball program. Think of program, him and think of the program from that one isolated And they, and they just incident. know him and the basketball team from that incident, which is unfortunate. Yeah, it was uh, clearly a mistake, but yeah. he he is a good guy. Mm-hmm. So I, I I don't know. I mean, I don't think you can make a judgment off off one you yeah. know, error that he made. Clearly it was big, and uh, I think it was kind of a slow uh, national news day, so of course it made... Yeah. Made, made news, every Literally but, made everything. Yeah, and it was, it, I don't know. It, I think... You know, he granted, you know, he's a student athlete, he's young and, you know, players, you know, players and, you know, people, they're going to learn from their mistakes just like that. And, um, I think the four game suspension for that, I think, uh, was granted probably, it was probably right for it. So you see that Tinkle wanted six, but the Pac-12 made him do four. Yeah. So, but I, depending on what Jarmal's in quotes, uh, Emotions and actions are here in the next hey, coming yeah. week or so. He's still able to practice, so he just yeah. Can't. He's able to practice with the team, but not he's not able to sit on the bench during games. Uh, Jeff, Brian, what's your guys' opinion on this? I mean, it's obviously really bad. Like you go back and watch it, and his eyes lock right. He yeah. finds where that ref is, and it's so intentional. And it could not have come at a worse possible yep. time in the game. Tied two minutes. Tied two minutes to go. You Momentum get shifted. And, and, well, two free throws. And he had just made back. a great play yeah. too, which is you like, know? why would you choose to do it in that? And it's it's just it's such a selfish play. I mean, I know. I mean, I don't know Jarmal like you guys do, but 
everything I've heard, he sounds like a nice guy, but that's just a selfish play in that situation, a game yeah. that the Beavers need to win. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. we've now gone on a three-game skid yeah, here well, in the Pac-12, well, yeah. and we needed that win. A win on the road at Utah is yeah, huge. So, yeah, that's also, let's talk about it, because before the game against Utah, we played Colorado, and uh, the Colorado game, that was, uh, well, it was just a tough game. Josh Scott... Um, oh man, he tore us apart. The, the college basketball version of Tim Duncan. Yeah, uh, not overly athletic, no, but just but seemed to make every move. That I he, know it was, it, just, it was rough. And you know, he they they that's what uh, that kind of started our rebounding woes. Actually, the rebounding woes probably started against Stanford. We did good against yeah. Cal. We talked about that last or the best last week as well. But uh, that game against Colorado. We couldn't rebound the ball. It continued. I mean, and, that's why we lost the Stanford game. I mean, they had what? I don't even know how many more, but I remember looking up. They had mm. significant amount more shots than we did. Yeah, and we'll talk about it in a couple games there. And the Utah game, you know, we had a lead uh, for, like, practically the whole game. Yeah, we, mm-hmm. I mean, we, we were up 10 in, in the second half. Yeah, and I think at one point it was, like, 30-something to 16, yeah. I think, 32 no, to 16. Beavs were looking good. We and were then, looking great. I was so I was in Seattle, I was visiting my sister at the mm-hmm. UW, and I'm like sneaking peeks, watching the game on my phone, and I check the score. Like I'm watching it, we're up ten. I'm like, all right, cool, I'll put it away. Like I don't have to watch. Yeah. I check back again, and it's right as Jarmal Reed trips trips the oh, ref. God. Yeah. I turn it on. I'm like, are you kidding? It's your fault, Jeff. I Damn. know. It's just I kept, it's I just kept fault. Watching. I should have kept glow. watching. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Classic. Uh, yeah. I, we just we lost some energy and we just couldn't score we went really cold there the last like seven eight minutes and it was just tough for us to buy a bucket mm-hmm. yep. uh, so uh i don't know let's uh we can read the statement of the uh jarmal and tinkle for both times uh the drama restatement states first and foremost i would like to apologize to oregon state university beaver nation the pac-12 conference my family my coaching staff and my teammates uh and the game officials. Reed said, "I'm all. I'm aware of my actions. Not embarrassed for my or embarrassed for my family, but also the university and the Oregon State basketball program. I was not raised to act in that manner. Uh, that was displayed on that play. I'm well aware that I made a mistake that has damaged my image. My actions are inexcusable, and I am willing to accept any consequences that to follow. So, I." Uh, yeah, he made because that was a lot of people were saying after the game. He's like, "Oh, you got a man up to," and it was everybody was like, "Hey, just kind of hold off." And that kind of came there in the Saturday afternoon game, yeah, the Saturday afternoon, it, I think. Yeah, and you, you know that's like pretty much all you can say. The unfortunate yeah. part for Jarmal is he's a, is is why he's got. I mean, that, that's a great shot for him to get. You know, right on the coin. Yeah, <laughs> this camera but coin it, guy. Yeah, he's, yeah, right. he's got his job. <laughs> the the job. coin did not rotate at all. Uh, <laughs> no. That's an easy fix. We can fix that. Uh, if anybody just saw it on there, we'll, we'll fix it. <laughs> Jake, uh, Jake, I did that last year. You're all right. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Jake, Jake's just breaking equipment. Jack's going to have to come in here and just, you know, rattle you off here. Uh, <laughs> still talking about the... Uh, but, man, oh, what you, um, what'd you guys think of the Cardinals side of it, though? Because a lot of people were talking about Packers, but then... Boom, Larry Fitzgerald. Larry. That, that was run. crazy. <laughs> Larry. Yeah, yeah, Larry Larry Fitzgerald kind of cemented his Hall of Fame bust right there with that with that playoff game. Yeah. I mean, he was already a Hall of Famer, but now I think it's kind of, you know, set in stone now. Uh I you know, a lot of people got on the Packers uh for that for leaving Larry Fitzgerald open, yeah. but that's not I mean, if if you know, I don't know, defensive football just you're really not expecting Larry Fitzgerald. The play is not designed for Larry Fitzgerald to run halfway across the field yeah. Yeah. and Carson Palmer to pull like a Russell Wilson type play, <laughs> you know, and throw it across his body. Yeah. That's just, it's just, I'm not going to call it lucky, but it's just a broken play that there's really nothing you can do about it if you're the Packers. And we do got a, uh, comment coming in through the live stream from someone watching online through video they say uh do any of the commentators think it was a mistake to kick should green bay have gone for two i agree i think they should have gone for two there it is uh can't say the name I, because it's an interesting username i, I but. think oh, i mean my my thinking <laughs> i think you go for it you have the momentum mm-hmm, you're on yeah. the road you have no wide receivers yeah. and and you know and, and, and it's tough when when you go in the overtime as well it's yeah. just like yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you know, air giving Arizona, I just wouldn't want to want the opportunity of giving Arizona another chance. If I'm the coach, I'm more yeah. than comfortable living saying, "All right, we're going to win. We're either going to win or we're going to lose here. I'm more than okay 
with going for it. You got to be, you got to have some guts sometimes and you know, you got to risk it. You yeah. got to risk it to get the Would biscuit. Chip Kelly Bruce thing to do. Says, yeah. I, but you know, okay. A guy like Belichick, Belichick goes for it. Yeah, or, exactly. I, mean, I, I mean, I don't know if I, I mean, I can't say he'd definitively go for it, but that's something Belichick would think of. And you know, you got to be able to take risks in yeah. those situations. And I think if you're the Cardinals or if you're the Packers, I'm sorry, you got to you got to take that risk. Get out get out of there. You're banged up. You have no healthy receivers yeah. to play yeah, yeah, in that yeah. overtime. Well, you got to get out of I, there. I think you just stick fat boy Eddie Lacy in there and you just let him run him. <laughs> just try to get some holes <laughs> well, there. Well, I mean, I don't know. Eddie Lacy might not be able to make those 2 yards. <laughs> might without, not be able to get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Needs oxygen. Yeah. No, I, that's something we talked about uh on last week's show was the whole skill position thing. No one doubted Aaron Rodgers, but yeah. The Packers, you know, he doesn't have that much to work with, and I f- think yeah. they got he got the maximum amount of, uh, you know, Jeff good plays Janus out of and them. Jared Abernaris <laughs> yeah. starting a playoff <laughs> game yeah. for the Green Bay Packers. Yeah. Yeah. I think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The power of the James Jones's hoodie just couldn't just can't prevail. prevail yeah, what do you what do you guys think of the hoodie? Yeah, what do you guys think of the James I Jones hoodie? I hate the hoodie. <laughs> I think it's so stupid. Okay. I think it looks kind of dumb, like when he's wearing it indoors. You know, like yeah. at Arizona, it's just like, dude, what are you doing? But like, I can get it when you're on the road at Minnesota when he first busted it out. Cause yeah. it was, you know, no, it was, no, it was before that. Though. He's been doing all season. Minnesota, but I mean, it just, it's not a good look. I think it was maybe like week 15 is when he started yeah, putting it's, it it's on. Not a, it's not a good look. Yeah. Not at all. So would that count as horse collaring if you just grab that hoodie? Yes, yeah, that's, that's what we were. That's what we were no, talking about. I don't think it is. I'm thinking no. it is because the dreadlocks are fair. Yeah, just be like, yeah, just be like, yeah. It's it'd be kind of like pulling the hair. That's yeah. what that's what I said on radio last week. It looks really dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got actually uh, we got a notification here. We got Danny Amendola fined twenty three thousand dollars for a blindside hit on Jamel Fleming last week, and I hate. Uh, Danny Amendola, he's the worst. I just want to throw that out there. Good. I hope yeah. he should get fined more, and he should get suspended for this next game. But that's just my opinion. Tell us how you really feel. Yeah, not a fan of him now. <laughs> oh wait, heads up. All Eesh. right. Sorry, breaking news off of NFL news. real quick. Uh, Cleveland has fired David Blatt, NBA. Wait, what? Wait. Yep. What? Are you serious? Yep. Just from Waj, uh, four minutes ago. Second Whoa. string breaking wow. news. Wait, are you sure? I haven't gotten Hold anything. Up. I haven't gotten an update yet. I'm. Yep. Oh, Twitter. we got Andre. Oh, wow. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. That's the breaking news eagle screech. David Blatt out of here? Well, I mean, what? All right, I know who's head coach now. It's LeBron. Luke Walton. <laughs> no. Guys, it's LeBron. Hey, yeah. you know, little conspiracy theory here. Steve Kerr comes back tonight. Warriors uh, yeah. fire Luke Walton. Luke Walton hired by the Cavaliers. <laughs> <laughs> I. They, no, they trade Luke yeah, Walton. Yeah, trade. They trade Luke Walton for... Uh, Anderson Varejao for Luke Walton. Anderson Varejao in a first-round draft pick because the Cavs love giving first-round draft picks away. I cannot, wa- I cannot wait for the Cavs to trade away all their first-round picks, and they're going to be like the Nets 2.0. Right. <laughs> because the Nets don't have a... They don't have a first-round pick all the way through 2018. Because of that trash decision that was made. To get KG and Paul, and Paul Pierce. Pierce yeah. And their old when they were 30, when they were back shelf, yeah. moldy cheese back of the fridge prime. Yeah, but anyway. <laughs> moldy cheese. Oh, man. I can't believe David Black got fired. That, that is strange. Yeah, that After is. beating the Clippers last night, too. Poor guy. Didn't even go out we're on breaking a... breaking news. <laughs> <laughs> the first radio show in all of uh, sports media to break the news? I bet you we, we're, probably we're probably in the top there. like probably 100 at least. Probably in the top 100. Yeah, I'm willing to go top fifty. Ooh, second street I'll sports. Put, I'll put it out there. Here you are, groundbreaking. <laughs> but wow, that's crazy. We will get into that for the second portion of the uh, yeah. NBA portion of the show. But uh, back to NFL. Me and Jeff have something to talk about. There it is, Seahawks. <laughs> talking about the Seahawks here. <laughs> Take us through the ride, the emotional roller coaster that was that game all right. of just the pits of depression to the the shrines of hope. So I'll take it all the way back to last Tuesday. Uh, oh, we got a little walking, story I was time. Walking the class, and I was walking the class with my roommate Ethan, um, and just we're kind of talking like, "Oh yeah, we got Martin Luther King, you know, day off on Monday." I'm like, "Oh," and like a light goes off. I'm like, "All right, I'm going up to Seattle. Got family up there. Gonna go watch the game in Seattle. Be with my fellow twelves. You know, embrace it." <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I was in Seattle. Could have gone out that night, celebrated exactly. nice. Disgusting. Exactly. Hit the Seattle bars. Um, 
First half was more. First quarter was more or less that so, trash. Was so Actually, bad. that trash can is the featured episode of that first half. On <laughs> right, we'll, we'll, we'll get a, first, we'll get another. That trash first can quarter was here. so bad, but uh, unbelievably I, I mean, bad. Believe, Those I, turnovers, I mean, unbelievably so bad. It was. I, I mean, yeah, it was just. It was bad, but I was not freaking out honestly like i'm the only one in my in i'm at my uncle's house and the only one sitting there they're all freaking out like it's over it's over i said nope they're gonna get a touchdown they're gonna be back in this we're gonna have a shot we got russell wilson because i mean if you watch the seahawks every week and if you watched them with russell wilson he's gonna find a way to do something at least make it interesting at least make it interesting That's- yeah and when it gets to and it got very it got interesting. interesting, you know, thirty-one twenty-four, and all we need is a all we need is a an onside kick there. Yeah. Um, Do you just imagine those two two times that we in the red zone when we went for it and said just two field goal opportunities? I know, you know, it, it, I mean, if that, yeah, that's a key right there. There's a lot of things, you know. If Russell doesn't throw that pick six, oh, uh, yeah, you know, it's it's a different game. If if, I if, hate if, Luke. If Pete, Luke if has Pete the kick, power if, of the force. If Pete kicks a field goal on, you know, inside his own thirty rather than going for it on fourth and five, and if uh, Hauschka hits the field goal before yeah. halftime, and you go into halftime thirty-one to six, it's it's a totally different game. Um, but I mean, I learned very early on in football, you don't if it's a woulda coulda shoulda game, you don't win. And that was a woulda coulda shoulda game for the Seahawks. There was there was just so too many things that went poorly for them, uh, and they just they weren't able to come. They 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 just ran out of time. Uh, I wasn't sad after the game. I I was pretty proud to be a Seahawks fan. Yeah, it was you almost know? like it was the like, best playoff loss we could have gotten honestly, out of that situation. Yeah, like was. you didn't I mean, feel bad after that game. Yeah, Any feel, Seahawks playoff loss is a good loss in my opinion. <laughs> hey, uh, how about them Chiefs? Right? Yeah. Uh, I was just happy to get the playoffs. <laughs> um, no, I mean no. I mean you said it, Jake. Like I was I was genuinely proud to be a Seahawks fan after that. I was like, you know, we battled back. Russell Wilson looked like the MVP candidate that he was for the second half of the season. Mm-hmm. In that second half. Uh, Seattle just got it going too late and you know, we'll see Seattle still got a young core I I still think they're gonna be able to make some noise here But I think we're also in agreement that that was the last game 